Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> Testing. Levels well, I put them on backwards. <laughs> Putting these bad boys on yep. the other way. There yep. we go. Okay, cord was <laughs> caught. Woo! Hello, James. How are you doing? How's it going, Jordan? This going is good, man. Awesome. This yeah, is so this is cool. Very exciting. I probably the first five minutes or so, I may just be like smiling for no reason, <laughs> just hearing my own voice and your yeah, voice. Yeah, no worries, man. No worries. And it's awesome that we got coffee too. Absolutely. Shout Eat. out to the coffee ethic. Ethiopian. So I'll be a, I'll probably be obnoxiously slurping it. Yeah, right yeah, in the mic. Me too. Like uh... ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Actually, um, well, I thought a good starter was whenever I was writing your name down mm -hmm. on the top of the sheet, writing up some questions. I, uh, I thought about it, and I have an ex-girlfriend who went by the last name of James. And she was related to Jesse James. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, isn't that kind of wild? Like, I, I went to high school with a pair of twins, uh -huh. and their names were Jesse and James. No way. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what are the odds of that? Yeah, pretty crazy. I guess, did their parents think that through, or? I'm sure they did, but, you know. They, they're just like, I, yeah. fuck it, I, let's why go not? for it. Why not? I respect it, I respect it. <laughs> Yeah, I like those like controllable names where the you're like, wow, that means the parents just like they they thought that through. Yep, and they're just gonna go for it. They're just gonna yeah. no shame. Yeah, <laughs> just like I don't care. I'm gonna name my kid uh, Hitler. Yeah, you know? uh, that's a little extreme, but <laughs> well, yeah, same that's... same concept, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just spilled some of the coffee. I apologize. Oh, no worries, man. Everything I own is. Uh, I, I mark my territory by splattering coffee on Ooh, things. There you go. So. <laughs> it's better by than peeing on things. So. I, I I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, also another starting point for sure. Uh -huh. Big, huge thank you. Yeah, absolutely, on, man. It's just, it's really funny because this podcast will go from like a recorder and then obviously same camera. Yeah. And then to just all this equipment and it's yeah. really cool. Well, it, it's like we were talking about last night. It, it really is like when you're starting out, it's leaps and bounds. You yeah. Know? Uh, the first few steps you can take are, are really major and you can make very drastic uh, improvements uh, very quickly and for, for relatively low investment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then this is like the first big investment you'd say. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Huge, huge. Yeah. That's cool too. Cause, uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot of like intangible progress, I guess you'd say like a lot of like personal growth and also just oh. like the, I guess the method or the strategy mm -hmm. of just being able to, I guess, get better at the craft. Yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, it all, it all comes with time. And, uh, like you said, it is, it's, it's far more intangible than the, the gear or the space or whatever else. Um, but it's bound to happen regardless of what you're doing. The longer you do it, it just, it, it develops almost subconsciously. You just develop a knack for it. And Absolutely. It, it takes off from there. Especially if you have like a, like an intention for progress. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the, the more you think about it, the more it's bound to, uh, again, subconscious progress, you know, uh, just, it, it's incredible how much something that's just sitting on the back of your mind, you know, sort of like not really like at the forefront, but always there, you know, kind of ticking. It just, it, it has a tendency to really take off in that sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that statement, there's nothing been more applicable to me personally than this podcast. Cause there's always like, I'm like, okay, like I got, I got an hour. It's like, oh. Like I, I'm literally motivated by taking in certain bits of information that I might find interesting, uh -huh. and the incentive therefore is like, oh, I could talk about this on a podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So it's actually it's heightened my curiosity, which is kind of a cool thought to mm -hmm. ponder. Yeah, yeah, it is super cool. Uh, I think a lot of the same can be applied to me uh, in terms of like the the audio stuff that I do. Um, cause it, it, it's always there and literally every skill I learn, every bit of information I collect how can I apply in the back this? of my mind is like, how is this applicable to what I want to do? 
you know, um, and that that stuff compiles and multiplies and ends up paying back in dividends. Absolutely, absolutely, and that return is just oh, there's it's a great, it's an addicting feeling, honestly. It really is. It That's really, really is. cool, and it's 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 cool when you you don't even notice that these you know certain skills or senses that you may have. Um, you know, you can sit down to do something that you've kind of been thinking about for a while. Uh And even if you've just been like researching it or just pondering it a little bit on your own time, when you actually sit down to do it, you can be really surprised by how apt you are to that thing already just Mm. from that forethought, you know? It's like mental preparation. In a sense, yeah. Um, Just being prepared. But uh, I mean, again, the more you think about it, even if it's on the back burner, um, it can it can really develop into very tangible skills um, that you can sort of possess without even knowing it. Absolutely, um, you can really surprise yourself that That's way. That's such a cool. It's like it's it's like programming your mind in a way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that, that's awesome. That's a really cool thought. So, are yep. you like the obsessive type? Like, where, where would you say you lie? Like to where you're constantly thinking about something or. Do you take a lot of time off as well or? Time off is an interesting concept and it's, it's something that I have been thinking about a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that as opposed to being obsessive, um, I, I tend to work for work's sake, if that makes sense. What do you mean Um, by that? So I have a tendency regardless of, you know, what I'm doing or what I'm working on to always feel like, you know, if I have something on my plate, I need to be working on it. So Mm. a lot of times, you know, I'll convince myself like I need to work tonight, uh, you know, on whatever project it is, whatever mix I'm doing and sit down. And even if I don't, I may not have a specific goal in mind. Uh So I end up sitting there and just kind of listening over and over, and like I convince myself somehow that that's still working, still even though I'm not making progress. Um, and the same thing can be applied, even if it's just like, you know, cleaning up in here or wrapping cables or whatever it may be, menial stuff that really doesn't make that much of a difference. But I still feel like I need to be doing it. Um, so I think that I'm I'm sort of coming into this time where I'm I'm realizing that. It's important to take time off and not work for work's sake. Um, so when I do sit down to work, it's intentional and I have a plan. And it ends up making my time far more productive and, uh, and just overall valuable. Mm. Um, so that, that's been a really big thing for me. And honestly, you could apply that same logic to like, okay, I'm making progress by taking time off right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you, you know, you... When you actually take time off, like real time off, you know, you come back and you're so much more refreshed and focused. It makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, something that might have otherwise taken you four hours of staring at the computer screen, working on, tweaking constantly, you know, if you just take an evening off, even an hour off, go take a nap and come back. It happens in like half an hour. I feel like this is something that you really drastically improve. And you're on, you know, honestly like throughout life, you're constantly going to be critiquing this. Uh-huh. But in your early 20s, to improve the self-awareness, to you kind of hit a roadblock in your work. And then you're like, okay, stop. What mm-hmm. can I do from here? Should I can, mm-hmm. continue to power through it? Or should I take this time off, go take a nap? Should I go hit a workout? Should I just give up on it for the day and then, and then focus on it tomorrow? And it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes. That's that's a total part of self-awareness and you need to implement persistence, of course, on top of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of people, myself, especially, um, tend to fall victim to the, the grind mentality where like, if you're not making progress, you, you just want to keep working at it and keep, you know, just grinding on it. Uh-huh. And that oftentimes kind of ties into what we were saying, can be so counterproductive. 
Um, and a lot of times I find myself actually, when I get in that mindset, I actually end up making backwards progress. You know, I, <laughs> I actually take steps backwards on whatever I'm working on and end up having to go back and correct a lot of that mm-hmm. when I actually sit down in the right frame of mind Absolutely. And, and start working. That is so, so true. Again, like time off is so valuable and it, it's a time management skill and like you said, a self-awareness skill. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this time and, you know, our lives, people who are our age, early 20s, uh, that, that's a huge learning curve and a self-discovery thing. Uh, and it's, it's such a valuable skill if you can really be self-aware enough to realize that and address it properly, um, it, it can make such a big difference. Time off equals progress. Yeah, in a crazy way. It's so counterintuitive because it feels like when you're taking time off, it's time wasted, mm-hmm. it's time you're not working, you know, et cetera. Um, but taking time off can pay back even more than sitting and grinding for hours at a time. Especially if you're like the obsessive type. It's yeah, like, it's like, oh, like, I don't want to take time off. I need to work. <laughs> I need to work. Yep. Yeah, that's wild. It, that's super applicable to me in college because I'll... I'll uh, always have, if I have like assignments on my mind or something like that, like especially whenever there's a lack of like organization or a lack of knowing what's coming up in the week, I'll put it in the back of my head and then it's uh, if I procrastinated a little bit or whatever. And I've noticed, like we were talking before, like the kind of like the devil's advocate of that concept to where it's actually working against you. The if I put something off or a lack of awareness with that, then it'll come back and kind of bite me in the ass. And just mentally, just mentally knowing that I have that to do. So then I feel guilty if I work on something else or, or if I go out and party or if I go out and hang out with friends or do something that's completely unrelated to school, it's like, Oh, I really kicked myself in the ass. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well uh we were talking the other day about the access to information yeah and just just how i guess just podcast podcast is an element obviously mm-hmm. the internet it, it's a definitely massive a player element. yeah i podcasts are interesting in the aspect just that you're able to auditorially take in information which is really cool that's a really cool concept yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it turns into something that you can do um, regardless of, you know, uh, you're doing dishes or laundry or whatever. Um, it has, it's, it's become so accessible mm. all the time, you know, um, and you can constantly be learning and gaining new skills um, sort of in a subconscious internalizing way, like we were talking about a second ago. Um, at, you know, otherwise it would be time wasted. And I feel like for so much of human history, you know, there are always things that you have to do. Uh-huh. You know, you may not be gaining anything from it. Uh, house cleaning, you know, basic necessities of life that take away from time that you could be improving yourself or improving your craft or whatever else it is that you do. Uh-huh. Um but the accessibility of podcasts, the 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 wireless, the tech revolution, um, has really you know it, it's all so accessible. You can learn constantly, and with minimal cost and with minimal and, yeah, attention yeah. as well. It doesn't require full attention like a book might. Sure, and you can sure. listen at when the you, exact yeah, same efficiency. When you, when you read a book, you have to like it is your activity. Absolutely, you sit and you read and you focus. And that's great, and I think that's a huge skill, and it's super valuable to have. I think it's a, a thing that a lot of people are lacking uh, in this time. Um, it's 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 easy to let that fall away given the accessibility, um, but the accessibility also has the huge benefit of, uh, you know, you can read a book as you're read a book as you're driving down the highway. Um, or, or whatever else you're doing. And like so. every, it, then daily mundane tasks that you're going throughout like your ordinary life mm-hmm. become opportunities. Yes, because, absolutely. Because I, of this platform. I or, absolutely, I look forward every week. Like Sundays are my day where I take care of house cleaning items. Uh-huh. I, I clean, I, I wash my sheets, my clothes, do the dishes, all that stuff. And Smart. I 
absolutely look forward to that time because it is the time where I know I can plug in and just, you know, go on physical autopilot in a sense, but let my mind roam free. And I get to learn so much and I gain so much and hear all these interesting things. Uh-huh. Um, and it, it, it has become a huge opportunity. That's really cool. I like that. I like that. You make, you make it an event every day yeah. the, or not yeah, absolutely. Every, once a week. Okay, I'm going to do all this. Right. But, and of course, that's not the only time that I'm listening, um, but it is a, a primary time where I have like hours of uninterrupted time mm-hmm. where I can really deep dive onto a topic or a book or whatever else it might be. And you enjoy doing that, like cleaning as well, a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. It, it makes everything else so much more palatable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the other night I had to clean it. My, my roommate just left our, uh, so we got back from winter break and my roommate just left our shower like disgusting, uh-huh. disgusting. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm like, you know what? Let's start this semester off on a better foot. <laughs> Let's change up the, the house culture. We can do this. So I, I take a step into the bathroom. I start cleaning. And I, and I, it's something about that progress, by the way, even if you hate doing this shit, like it's mm-hmm. just that, that knowing the end result is going to be like a better lifestyle for you yep. and your roommates or you and your loved ones, whoever that may be. Um, Huge driving force. It's, it's a good feeling. And then whenever you like implement a podcast on top of that, it's like, wow, this is, this is like, I'm enjoying doing this. It's, it's a weird thing. Cause you, you literally take something from, uh, I got to do this to something to, wow, I get to do this today. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, totally off topic, uh-huh. but sort of, a, a, a branch off on your comment about house culture. Uh, uh-huh. it's crazy how difficult it is to change a house culture once you're already in the house. Hmm. hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but like I've noticed this moving multiple times with the same roommates. Uh-huh. How, uh, so like, for example, I lived with the same guys, you know, some of them, you've met them. Um, I lived with the, basically the same group of four guys for mm-hmm. like three or four years through college. Okay. Um, and we moved at least that many times, just about once a year okay. we moved. And it was really fascinating from sort of a psychology perspective um, to see how the culture within each of our houses changed depending on how we moved in. So, so the like, environment would impact how you guys interacted with each other? And, and not, well, what I'm getting at is not just the, the environment in terms of the physical house, mm-hmm. but like your attitude moving in. You know, if you go in with the intention of like, we're going to keep it clean mm-hmm. and like you move in in an organized fashion. Uh-huh. It really like sets the tone for how the house is going to be that whole time. So like, for example, uh, at the, the last house I lived in before this one uh-huh. uh, where you had visited before, uh, I was away on an internship. I, I interned at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. for a summer. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds the really Smithsonian? cool. Yeah, it, I, it, I, well, I, I know I've heard of it, but I yeah. don't know like what it actually is. So the Smithsonian is. is a federally funded museum uh, association, I guess is the proper term, institute. Oh, wow. Um, but they, I mean, it's like, imagine like the mall uh-huh. in D.C. where the Washington Monument is and the White House on the other end, uh, uh-huh. or the state capitol, I mean, the like the Lincoln Memorial. Their museums line the National Mall. So they have the National Museum of American History and like art museums and you know, everything else. So this is like the so, hub for all the museums and probably the coolest spot in America for museums. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the, wow. the Smithsonian is a huge institute. Um, Good that for is, you. Is, I didn't know you did that. Yeah, yeah. That's um, sick, man. So I got, to, I got to intern with their audiovisual department for a summer. I spent three months living in D.C. and working on the National Mall. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, my, my dorm room apartment thing where I lived was uh, like I could see the White House. Wow. So it was crazy. And I walked across the mall to work every day. That's so insane. That was super cool. Yeah. Um, we, we can talk about that more later if yeah, we want absolutely. to. But back to my original point. Um, so I had this internship and my roommates all moved into this house while I was away. Right. So they're creating this culture independently of you. Correct. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So – I come back from D.C., so I was there for three months, right? Absolutely. Uh, I was gone, I want to say, like two or three weeks 
when they moved. So it was pretty early on mm-hmm. in my my stint in DC. And they had a solid couple of months in the house without me, like before I got back. Mm-hmm. So um, they moved a lot of my stuff. They moved all their stuff, all that. And I come back home and they're still two months later, like, moving boxes stacked on the living room floor that they're using like as a coffee table. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. Like your moving boxes? Like or? the the boxes that we'd packed all our belongings in, like collectively. We just oh, bought a bunch wow, of boxes. Okay. And I mean they were just like scattered everywhere. Like there were still half full boxes of stuff scattered around and they uh-huh. had this big stack of collapsed cardboard boxes on the living room floor, like right in front of all the couches that they were like setting plates on and stuff like around the TV. You're you know? like, yeah, I'm going to change this. Cause it, it, if you didn't cu- knock that thing. off, I mean, I cleaned that up, uh-huh. but I couldn't change that culture. Slippery slope. That's what I'm saying. And when then you, you move the in, maid. when you move into the house, mm. yeah. When you move into the house, the, the way you move in, like it really sets the tone for the duration. We lived in that house for two years and it was a constant struggle keeping that place clean. That's interesting. Yeah. Just because the starting point just because was of the, the tone of the starting point uh-huh. and certain things were allowed where like, you know, if if one other person, me in this instance, if I had been there, uh, you know, it it could have drastically changed that dynamic just in terms of like keeping things organized as you're moving in and cleaning mm-hmm. up and things like that. Because you think you think like optimistically speaking, you're gonna walk back in the house and be like, Hey, all right, guys, like like, let's go. Like, you're, you just walk in, like, <laughs> clapping. You're like, let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. I, I try to make that clap pick up uh-huh. on the mic. I, yeah, I heard it. Success. Oh, okay. Cool, <laughs> I heard cool. It. Uh, so you walk in, you're like, all right, let's go. Like, come on, guys. Let's switch this up. Let's go uh, clean up our dishes and all mm-hmm. that. And you think you're going to be, like, this positive influence, this positive change for the yeah. house. But you're actually an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I try I try to avoid that label. It happens sometimes uh-huh. when when you're the guy who wants things clean, you know. Um but yeah, the the other really interesting thing was that I noticed it impacted my habits as well. Um interesting. moving into this house that already has this culture established um in in terms of organization and cleanliness and it it affected I I tend to be uh, I try to be an organized person uh-huh. and, you know, keep things clean and stay on top of things and have a routine, you know, kind of like I was talking about, like Sundays are my house cleaning day, you know. Um, but moving into a house where that type of disorganized environment is already established, I found myself much more prone to falling into those habits myself. Wow. Wow. This just goes to say, like, how much we're just creatures of habit. Oh, 100%. It's also just insane how much the people I, I this is such an overused quote, at least me personally, I've heard it a million times, but uh-huh. you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I love that quote. It's so true. I love that. It it totally is. It's and crazy. It, I only heard that quote recently. I want to say probably three or four months ago was the first time I heard that quote. And okay. I remember it very specifically because I heard that and I was like, holy shit. Uh huh. Punch to the gut. Like, wow. Because <laughs> then you get you get a lot more uh, and you, self-aware about you totally do. who do I want to surround myself and, with. And even retrospectively, mm-hmm. I started looking back and, and kind of thinking about it critically and analyzing. And I was like, wow, it's totally true. And like mm-hmm. thinking about different phases in my life, different times in my life, um, hanging out with different people. Uh, which, of course, changed with, you know, different schools and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, like it, it's totally true. You you recognize it, and looking back, I was like, I thought about who I was spending my time with at the time, and one hundred percent accurate. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like I said, I only heard that quote recently, but it's become something that I think about actively on a regular basis. You know, currently, mm-hmm. and I try to surround myself. Um, Another another quote that kind of goes in tandem with uh-huh. this that I really like uh, is you know try to be the dumbest person in the room. I like that. Not in the sense that you're stupid, but that you're surrounding yourself with people who are smarter than you in other ways. Mm-hmm. You know, um, again, you're the average of those people, and if you're the dumbest person in that room, that average is inevitably, mathematically, it's going to bring you up. Absolutely. Because I've, I've met a lot of people that like the opposite of that. They like to be, they like to surround oh, themselves I, with 
kind of like dummies. Like, yeah, and yeah. Then I, I actually have like the, the two friends that are coming to mind. Obviously, not going <laughs> to state any names or anything, but sure. I have. I think they're both like intelligent dudes. Like, uh-huh. I, I think highly of them, but they like to be perceived as like the more intelligent person. I'm like, and I've, that that logic has just never. And that strategy, I guess you'd say, has never made sense or resonated with me because mm-hmm. that's how I like to be. I like to uh, not – not because I, I don't get like belittled or feel belittled whenever mm-hmm. I'm like surrounded by people that I consider more intelligent than myself, at sure. least in a particular way. It's like, yo, how can I be a student? How can I learn here? Yeah, Because yeah, there's absolutely. something to learn from that and that's, guy. That's such a great mindset, and I, I seriously admire that in you. Um, I, I tend to – I, I have a tendency, I think, to be intimidated uh-huh. a little bit, um, and I'm I'm not typically a very socially outgoing person. You know, something that I'm really? working on. Really? Yeah, yeah, something that I'm working on, but typically I I don't really like, you know, socializing that much. It, it it's a skill. I I've turned it into a skill mm-hmm. that you know I can tangibly think about and sort of analyze quantitatively and qualitatively mm. and improve upon. Um, but you know, like all growing up all through high school, it was like, you know, I, I had like my one or two friends, but that's, that's really the, the only people I associated with. Um, so you consider yourself an introvert? I, I do. Um, I, I think introvert is kind of a slippery slope because especially I, I think it's been sort of manipulated by pop culture and social media and memes to kind of be this thing where it's like introverts just sit at home wrapped up in a blanket all day and it's bullshit. like don't talk to people. Yeah, it's totally bullshit. Um, so, I mean, I, I think people who, who gravitate towards things that I gravitate towards, I mean, I like to sit in this room and turn all the lights off and, and twist knobs all day. <laughs> you know, that, that's what I like to do. Uh-huh. Uh, that's, that's my first choice of pretty much any given activity. Mm. Uh, so socializing with people is hard. Not to say I don't enjoy it. I find it incredibly fulfilling uh-huh. when I find a person or group of people that I connect with mm-hmm. and can really be comfortable around. And, you know, I always come away feeling fulfilled. That being said, I still feel drained. It takes so much energy. Um, really? So, yeah. Even with people that you really vibe with and mm-hmm. really get along with, really? Just being around, yeah, being in the presence of other people is is physically and mentally slash emotionally draining. Um, Sorry so, to be such a vampire of all your energy over here. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, like, right after you leave, I'm going straight to bed. Wow. <laughs> no, no, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you, you kind of get what I'm, what yeah, I'm getting at here. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I, I think I, I would like to think, you know, I don't know for sure without really, you know, hearing other people's perspectives, but I like to think that that's a little bit more accurate representation of what an introvert really is, uh-huh. um, you know. Not to say that introverts just hate people or don't like being around people. It's just more taxing than other activities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I've heard it described as like extroverts get their energy from people and introverts get their energy from elsewhere. Exactly. Yes. And honestly, dude, like I've – I really get along with introverts. I think I, – I don't want to say I have a favorite type, you know, because I, uh-huh. I see like the beauty in both sides in a lot of ways. But I don't know because I keep I – keep, meeting a lot of people that are very, very like, so like just socially intelligent and very articulate. And I mean, this, I would say both of those compliments go to you as well. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, but I, I find introverts, they're very unique from the, the highly extrovert people. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, it's almost like they have a, generally speaking, of course, uh, it's almost like they have a hobby or something else. Yeah. To do instead. And I see a little of myself in that as well. So I guess maybe I can just relate to that. I, I don't know yeah. what it is exactly, but I, yeah, I've, I find introverts, stereotypes of introverts and extroverts to be, they're different, but introverts are also like very good socially as well, which I would say is kind of a kind of counterintuitive to the stereotypes. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um, I, I think that's really interesting what you said about, you know, you, you tend to see sort of a, a trend with 
you know, stereotypically introverted people uh, being more likely to have a hobby or a passion or, mm-hmm. or something else that they work at. Um, I, I think that's absolutely true um, with with most other people that I've met who think of themselves as an introvert or who I would, you know, sort of qualify to be an introvert. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. So let's go back to the social intimidation. Do you think that's something from like you growing up or? You know, I really don't know. I've, I've thought about this a lot and I, I haven't come to, uh, you know, I, I haven't decided yet. I, mm-hmm. I haven't come to a, conclu- a conclusion yet. Absolutely. Um, I, I grew up in, it, I mean, I might. I, I grew up in a very small town, mm-hmm. uh, Granby, Missouri. And uh, this is a farm town of about 21, 2200 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have one flashing red stoplight at the intersection of Main Street and Highway 60. Do you have a gas station? There, there are two gas stations, actually, but they're both owned by the same people. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we have a Dollar General and a Ramey's, which is like a, a branch of Price Cutter. Uh, and a couple local restaurants, but that's it. Wow, I didn't so, realize you grew up like that small of a town. Mm-hmm, that's yeah. wow. So, um, but yeah, it was it was really interesting. So I didn't start out going to school in Granby. Uh-huh. Um, I, I went to this. Uh, I went to a school in Joplin. Uh, it was called Thomas Jefferson. It was like a private school. Okay. Um, but very small class, mm-hmm. and they were people that I was separated from physically. You know, Joplin is like forty minutes away, um, so it's not like uh, okay. not like I Distance. can run next door to my buddy's house when I'm a kid and play. Um, so you were forced to go into not necessarily solitude, but be but it, with it's, your family exclusively. It, it's a little bit of the environment I was exposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I, I don't want to say that that is the the causation, mm-hmm. um, but I think it's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very interesting factor to consider. Um, but um, even then, so I, I went to Thomas Jefferson mm-hmm. uh, where I was in a class of like 15 to 20 people. Mm. Um, that's all that was in my grade. Uh, and so was, even your like your social time is still very limited. Pretty limited, yeah. Wow. Um, and that was like a K through 12 school. Um, so I went there from like kindergarten through fifth grade. And then my parents made the decision to – uh, bring us to Granby Public School. Uh, and even then, uh, I, I never really, I mean, I had friends, like I went to church in Granby growing up. I knew people, I played little league, you know, mm-hmm. so I had people that I knew, uh, I played on a, like a traveling soccer team. So I had friends from all these things. No, no way. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, again, we can talk about that yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, I think I've heard you're a soccer player too. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyhow, uh, but never felt super connected with these people. Mm. Um, for the most part, my, my circles were always very small. Um, I, I was always into things that other people weren't, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, music and things like that. Um, I, I always like, I, I grew up loving, I say grew up when I was in, you know, uh, late elementary, junior high years, I got really into metal and, and that was like my thing. Not super popular in a farm <laughs> town. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so like I said, circles were always relatively small. Mm. Um, so it was, it was definitely, I, I think it's fair to say that that was a, a, a factor in, you know, my, my social habits now. It's really interesting how behavior changes and it seems like the one element and I relate to this at least personally, but it for you as well, I'm I'm just gonna diagnose you real quick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go I'm just for kidding. it, no. But the the one element, and this is all you would need to change, is a um a, a sort of connection, like some mutual ground between you and the other person. Mm-hmm. That's that's really interesting to think about. Because I, I grew up the same way and actually going back to soccer, I I Always had I had a fair amount of friends through school, a fair amount of friends through X, Y, and Z, just people I met around. But it was always interesting because my pretty much pretty much my entire life I played on like five different soccer teams. I never really got that close with um, excluding one of those teams or two of those teams. I like so most most of my soccer career I never really got that close with like any of my teammates. Mm-hmm. 
to an extent. But that, that is very comparable to my experience as well. That's mm-hmm. really interesting. So I played on a traveling 3v3 team. I don't know. Have you ever oh, played 3v3? Sick. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So super fast, exciting game, uh-huh. super fun. But it was a traveling league, uh, traveling team, sorry. Uh, we played in the, the Kick It League mostly. I don't know if you're familiar, but we, we traveled all over the country. Um, oh, we, no way. Yeah, yeah. So we, we played a lot in the four states area. But uh, if I remember right, I want to say there was like a tournament in Iowa and we went down to Texas one time and we actually wound up going to the, the national finals wow. uh, for this league, which was at Disney's Wide World of Sports in Orlando. I played there. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. That, yeah. That facility's cool. Oh, it was crazy. I think the Atlanta Braves trained there for really? their. Uh, Spring training. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, like uh, it was January. I'm pretty sure it was January 2008 Mm -hmm. was when we went to the national finals. But, again, traveled all over the the country together. Mm -hmm. And it's it's been a long time since I've talked to any of those guys. That's wild. There's one guy, uh, Zach, who I've connected with recently and, mm-hmm. and talked with a little bit about music and things and he's uh he's also he he's started a business so um you know kind of cool to see someone else that i grew up with like starting a business while i'm also trying to start a business in a sense absolutely, um, absolutely. so we've kind of connected a little bit but really like you know it's it's everybody went their own separate ways um, i used to dwell on that a lot too that that principle i was like Man, like I spent so much time, committed so much time to uh, not even necessarily just the craft, but this group of people. And it's like, what what do I have to show now? Yeah. It's kind of it, I, like I kind of get down about that. And I mean, same goes for high school. I just I just think natural human behavior. If you're not in the same environment with somebody, um, it's probably be- better now more than ever with social media. But I just think humans don't really have a tendency to think outside of their immediate realm Mm -hmm. so sometimes this person that you got along super well with and if you saw him again you probably get along with him super well from eighth grade is living over in texas and you're living in california it's like you just you just kind of you just kind of go your separate ways and it's it's it takes an effort to reconnect and i think people just kind of fall into their own uh habitual routines and kind of tend to forget about it i guess yep Yep, it's very easy to do so as your your life circumstances change. You know, um, it, it's easy to just get involved in you know your your current state and lose touch with those people. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, all of all of my guys are still uh, pretty much like in my hometown area. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're all a lot of them have uh, like one or a couple kids now, settling down, kind oh, of thing wow. like that. So. It's it's also interesting to see how like just the the different stages of life can kind of you know naturally you don't you don't have as much in common anymore. Yeah, yeah. Especially whenever like somebody somebody has kids and you don't, it's like like that's you, 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 such you tr- a game changer. Yes, like I try to empathize. I try to like talk with some of my friends that ended up having kids as well. Yeah. It, but like on the topic, their it's whole hard world, to relate. their whole world just mm. flipped upside down. Mm-hmm. So it, it, that child became their world. And then you're yep. like, I can pretend to know what I'm talking about <laughs> when it comes to your kid. Like, <laughs> right. Right. What, what are buying diapers like? Do you even want to <laughs> talk about it? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Probably not. Honestly. Yeah. yeah true. <laughs> it's like, no, please. This is like the 20 minutes I get the not 20 to minutes think about that I get to kid. not think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for sure. I love him, him or her to death, but shut the hell up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Definitely. That's funny. That's funny. That's why I always try to like not ask people about their work for that exact reason. Yeah. You know, I'm like, like, do you, do you necessarily want to talk about your work? Like you yeah. do that all and day I, long. It, it depends on the person a hundred percent, you know, um, uh, that's, that is an easy trap for me to fall into mm-hmm. because, uh, for me, like my work, my, my audio work is my, hobby it's my passion you know it's it's what i do and it's what i want to do which by the way and huge shout out and congratulations to to having your work and your hobbies be simultaneously happening thank you thank That's you so I'm, cool I'm, to me that is the disclaimer, coolest thing thank you disclaimer i'm i'm still working on that still got the desk job mm-hmm. you know but we're transitioning all the time 
you know? Absolutely. So, um, literally like anytime I'm not at my office, Mm -hmm. this is where I am and Mm. this is what I'm doing. I say this is where I am. You know, I might be on location somewhere halfway across the country. Um, but same, same difference. Pursuing Um, the same thing. Correct. Yeah. But that being said, when I ask about people's work, I'm hoping to find things like that. I'm hoping to find passions and, and, you know, true interests and things people want to do as Mm -hmm. opposed to, um, you know, day job, hate it. I'm, I'm trying not to think about it right now. Right. Kind of thing. And I, I think I, I've, I've read that this generation has more of an aptitude and a tendency towards entrepreneurship than any other generation previously. Interesting. Um, so I, I think that's a shift, and it's it's becoming more common for people to have passions that are their work. Mm, mm. And do you ever think about the societal benefits? Like what, oh, what's going absolutely. to result in that? Like, yeah. just to, I mean, because pretty much what we're talking about is more passionate and therefore more satisfied, more satisfied, society. more yeah. just happy. Yep. general well-being. Yes. Like what what society going to be like? Are we just going to treat each other better? Like yeah. I, I mean ideally speaking like there are going to be a lot of positives that come out of that. Which oh, is cool 100%. To think about. 100%. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fantastic. Mm. I I absolutely love it. And uh, you know, I I I feel privileged and and very lucky to be living in such a time, you mm. know. Uh, it's it's hard to wrap my mind around what it would be like to live in previous generations and like get a job that pays the bills and spend you know forty years of my career doing that one thing mm. and then retiring and just being done. Joe, sure. that would that that's literally my biggest fear. If we're being yeah. honest, committing and like it, a huge majority of my time and life to something I don't enjoy doing. That yeah. scares the shit out of me. Absolutely. And it's preventable. That's the beauty of it. It, it 100% is. And it's it's more preventable now than it ever has been. Yeah. Yeah, good point. So so there's no excuse not to be a little bit stubborn Absolutely about it. no excuse. Yeah. I, I think that virtually everybody mm-hmm. um, has the the resources to make that happen. You know, and this is also not to put anybody down who does have a career job, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, a a day job or however you want to classify it. Like if that's what makes you happy, more power to you. As long as you're doing what you want to do, that's great. Um, And there will always be stepping stones. You know, there will always be a progression for people to go through. Um, But again, if you're passionate about something and you want to make it happen and there's potential for it, Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any excuse not to pursue that in this day and age. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Be stubborn. Yeah, absolutely. Just give it a go. Especially, that's that's what's depressing to me the most, is like somebody has this idea, they have this thought in the back of their head, they're like, I would like to try this, or I would like to start that company, I'd like to start that business. Uh, Or even if it's they want to continue down the same career path and they just, they never give... uh, I don't know, like, say they want to give drumming, just mm-hmm. trying out drumming as a hobby, and they never give that a go. Just, I don't know, just the thought of somebody having so much regret for not doing something. I don't know. Like, I just I just empathize a little bit more than most people, I think. Uh-huh. Or yep. I, I, I'm not even going to say most people. I just have a lot of empathy for that. Sure, yeah. Especially, you know, uh, again, Tying everything back to the uh, the accessibility of information, how can you not? Sure. You know what's to lose? There, there's little to no expense associated with an entry level education. Um, you know, I'm sorry for people who don't pursue that. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, um. Well, I, this this just triggered a thought that happened to me the other night, and mm-hmm. no names again. Uh, it's, it's one thing I've gotten more conscious of, like yeah, not using name dropping, y- yeah, yeah. Which I, I don't really think I did before, but like definitely conscious of that, and like the the results that could be sure shed by using 
uh, uh, just the power of your words. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, um, so somebody gave me the compliment the other night when I saw them, and they said, "Hey, I just want to, I just want to say it's so cool how you've always been." Because I've known this individual for probably about three, three, four years, roughly. And uh, they're like, I think it's so cool how you've always just gone for whatever you want to do. And uh, I kind of thought back on like my college career, I guess you'd say. And uh, I'm like, yeah, there are a few, there are a fair amount of things that I've just like started up and this podcast even being one of them. And, and he's like, it's so cool. And he's like, you've literally like impacted my life. And I was like, wow, that, that's some high praise that yeah. I, I, I really, uh, Thank you. Thank you. I, I, yeah. I know nothing else to say than thank you. And uh, they continued on and they just like they, they had this look in their eye. Granted, we were at the bar and we were drinking a little bit, but they just like they like looked into my soul almost. And they're like, dude, like it's so cool how you just go after whatever it is you want to do. And like you have no idea. And then they yeah. were, and then I was like, thanks. I, I just kept like just just saying thank you. Thank you. Like it, it, it's such an interesting dynamic, you know, mm-hmm. to be complimented on that that deep of a level Mm -hmm. for something that you're just doing you're not even thinking about it it's like i i'm doing this because i almost have to i don't know how not to you know you're just being it's like the kanye line uh for me giving up is way harder than trying (laughs) yeah i feel that exact i feel that exactly and that's how i saw it too i was like dude i'm just i'm just doing me i'm not thinking about the impact it's having i mean i mean I'm trying. I am. I'm thinking about it a little bit, but it's. I'm. Tr- I'm trying to make a positive impact, ultimately. But like, uh-huh. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just doing, the, doing me and doing what I want to do to the yep. best of You're my just ability you. with integrity. Yep. But to keep going on that, so he he just keeps looking me in the eyes like, you have no idea. And I was like, thanks, man. Like, hey, that I is just, some perspective. I just kind of continue it on the diversity of, you know. People mm-hmm. our age and humans in general. Uh huh. And he he said it about six more times, and then we go to a different location. He's like, "No, like, thank you." <laughs> like he, he just kept, back he just full kept circle. thanking me. And I yeah. was like, "Yeah." I just didn't know what to say. I'm I, I'm at the point. I'm like, okay, like I I do my best to like be humble and taking a compliment, sure. and I I'm like I don't know what to say. And then and then he just he just kept saying, "You have no idea." And I was and I, I pulled him aside. And I'm like. It, like, were you thinking about suicide? He told me later on that he had a gun in his mouth and was thinking about pulling the trigger, but didn't simply because and it was not, not just because of me. Like he, he said some other variables, but like, I was like a main reason why he did not. And I was like, I just gave him a hug, but I'm like, I don't know what to say. Like that's, yeah. that's crazy. And I, I'm like, I'm so sorry that that like went, uh, your mind went that place and i mean I've, I've definitely i've spent some time depressed as well for sure so sure. i can empathize with that and it's like what do you say to that uh, you mm-hmm. know like what do you say to that i'm just like dude i love you man and i just gave him a hug and i i just yeah i don't know and that that means so much you know just that that kind of response mm-hmm. i think that's i mean that what else can you do in a situation like that? I think that's the best way you could have reacted. And like, that's such a crazy position to suddenly like that fast find yourself in. Um, but it's, it's, it's incredible that again, something that you're just doing Mm -hmm. can mean so much to anyone else. True. Um, so that's, that's just another, you know, another driving force for that mentality of do you and do it with integrity. And because it's not only impacting you, but it's impacting the people around you as well. I really like how you said you have to. Yeah. It's like you have to. Like it's I mean, that that's how I feel. Like when I do what I love. Like, I don't know how to do anything else. And I don't know how not to. Like you said, it, it's it's harder to give up than to keep trying. Yeah. And you're going to project more love out to everybody else you meet as well. And yep. just the, the positive Im- impacts that are going to result in that. It's, it's cool to think about. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I like that. It's like you take on the responsibility. You have a moral obligation to mm-hmm. do what you enjoy doing because therefore it could benefit yourself, which could have 
massive results, mm-hmm. like positive results as well. Yeah. yeah. And not to say it's always easy, you know, but with that sort of, you know, with that thought in mind, as well as how easy and accessible information is now, like we were talking about, like, again, it's, it's just another reason that you, you, you can't say no. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah, very cool stuff. Do you mind if I uh, get some more of that Ethiopian coffee? Absolutely, man. Woo! Thank you. I think it's still warm? I think so. It's funny, I can like barely hear it getting filled yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. I will say, too, uh, the first like 10 minutes, roughly, I, I felt, I don't want to say uncomfortable, like talking like this, but yeah. I was like... Like, it was just like, dude, this is, this is weird. Like I kind of, it was kind of in the back of my head, but I, then it just, it feels very natural at this point. Yeah. Weird, weird in what way? Weird because of the setting or the, the headphones or. I think the headphones. Yeah. Like it's, uh, and maybe, maybe it's from like my perspective too, of like uh-huh. doing this hundred, hundred, however many times before yeah. this episode. And then it's like, I, that's, I'm that's doing a lot it, it's of a different experience. Doing things one way. Well, yeah, well said. So well doing said. And, and in a different location, different environment, like, you know, that's enough to, to put anyone a little bit on edge. True, true. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't take the environment into consideration yeah, either. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I and mean, I'm like, is this guy a serial killer? He's got me in his house <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, man. I, I was told once that I, uh, I, I, I have some friends who, who – think that everybody has like a, a serial killer trait mm-hmm. you know i was told once that mine is that i don't wet my toothbrush before i brush my teeth <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's accurate or not but. <laughs> it's such a small detail how do they know that are, are these your roommates i'm assuming uh it, yeah basically okay yeah I was going to say, how do they know that about you? Maybe they're the serial killers. For, yeah, right. Hey, they're watching me. You don't, you don't wet your toothbrush. You're, you're a serial killer. Like, <laughs> how do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. That's funny because uh, I don't think I used to wet my toothbrush years back. Mm-hmm. But I you think do in now. the past few years, I started doing that. Mm, interesting. Yeah. It's funny how habits change like that. Drew. Yeah. And also, totally unconsciously. I will say I feel like less than a serial, like less of a serial killer now than whenever mm. I was younger. But you there, know. You <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're going. We're going ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> I didn't even know what ASMR was until about a month ago. It's so weird, man. <laughs> I I honestly don't I don't vibe with it. I don't really get it. I don't know what but, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. It was something on the uh, audio spectrum that just like popped in my head uh-huh. that you you told me the other day that I just found really interesting was uh, how. You you said your do you, I don't know if it's a mind thing or if it's like your ears or both kind of simultaneously, but I guess the two or one is very malleable and adaptable to whatever um, audio is being projected. Mm, yeah, so sort of I I was speaking about that in in reference to like mixing, mm-hmm. so like. Um, we, we haven't really gone over this yet, I guess, but mm-hmm. I am an audio guy. I do, uh, I, I record bands, I produce them, I mix their songs. Uh, I also do location audio. Uh, I'm the guy on a film set with the big boom microphone, oh, you yeah. know, and the big bag on his hip with the, the mixer and everything. So I do, I do all that stuff. Um, but, uh, what you're talking about was something I said sort of in relation to when you're mixing music, um, it's, it's important to keep your sort of perspective in mind um, because it, it's very easy for your brain to grow accustomed 
to what you're listening to. Um, so if you're listening to some guitars that just sound really, really bad mm -hmm. on first listen, but then you, uh, you know, you, you listen to them for half an hour, an hour, however long it may be, uh, your brain sort of gets used to that and, uh, adapts a little bit and it, it just becomes the way you're used to hearing that specific musical passage you know, um, so it, it can be really easy to lose yourself in that. Um, if you're, if you're not listening to other things, other songs for a reference point or, or taking breaks, you know, um, again, here we're, we're back to time off. <laughs> um, it, it really pays dividends to take a few minutes off and then come back with fresh ears and a fresh mind and listen to something again because it is very easy to grow accustomed to it. And when you're used to hearing a song sounding bad and then you you come back uh, and you're trying to make it better, something that might actually sound better in the end sounds wrong because it's not what you're used to hearing. Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's uh, kind of kind of plays along the logic that like better is subjective mm -hmm. based on what information you've taken. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Wow, it's really that's interesting. Really interesting. Um, it, it really is. Uh, as I've grown in my, my audio, you know, knowledge, uh, career, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's budding form. Um, the, the relationship between music mixing and psychology is is really fascinating to me for things like that in terms of my own psychology as well as the communication with other people um you know the the dynamic and the relationship that i have with the clients and the artists that come in and record with me mm -hmm. um you know it's it's such an interesting balance uh that's it's such a big reason why i love what i do uh, is because it's it's a blend of psychology and interpersonal skills and communication skills, as well as uh, technical skills. You know, it's a very technical. It's almost more of a trade than anything else. It's a trade and an art and a communications based endeavor. Um, so so it's, much in one. It, it's such an interesting blend of all these things, and to really be, I believe, to really be successful, you not only need to be technically really good at what you do, but you also need to be sensitive to people and good at communicating. Um, and I think that's sort of a, a stereotype of the past um, and still to the present to some extent that audio engineers are these grumpy old guys, uh, not even old, just grumpy guys who, uh, you know, are kind of assholes stereotypically um, because they have no people skills. They've, they've got all the tech stuff down, you know, because they like to sit in dark rooms and twist knobs all day. They're not <laughs> good with people. Um, but when you, when you find the balance of both, um, that's when you can really find some true success and create something great. Sounds like a real skill that you, that you are probably, I, I would assume, decent at at least, is being able to critique somebody with them – being conscious of the fact that, hey, this guy's here to help me. He yeah. wants the best quality. I want the best quality. And that that has to be hard with people's egos. Like, you yeah. have to, because you, you got to kind of. Uh, Let me tell you, artists' egos oh, are like glass. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So it, 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 you know, it is very important to learn. And this, this is something sort of in tandem with developing, you know, my social skills, like we talked about earlier, as sort of this quantitative, qualitative skill mm -hmm. that I can, you know, sort of put in the mindset of being like, you know, this is like learning how to mix or how to use a compressor properly. You know, if I tweak this thing, it has this result, you know. When you view it like that, for a person like me anyhow, it's, it's easy to... Um, to kind of start to figure it out. Um, but developing those people skills and learning how to give feedback in a constructive way without just, you know, being, that was bad, do it again, is now. huge. 
Right. Now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're wasting my time. Get it right or get out kind of attitude, which I feel like, again, is stereotypical mm-hmm. of producers and audio engineers in the past. Um, That's a good point. Because, I mean, it's you're inevitably going to be collaborating, mm-hmm. and they get the choice, who do I want to work with? Sure. So you got to be... Um, and and now more than ever, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, what, 40, 50 years ago, this, completely impossible. Wow. You know, like, think of your, your stereotypical big commercial mixing uh, or recording studio, you got the giant board, you know, tons of gear everywhere. And that, you know, with the, the advent of digital technology and the incredibly rapid advances it's been making mm-hmm. and how accessible and cost effective it's become, everybody and their brother has a laptop with a recording program and a decent mic and can make an album, you know? And if you don't, also have the people skills to make people feel comfortable and to develop those personal connections um, on a deeper level than just a working relationship, Uh you're, you're, you're gonna, you're not gonna float. You're gonna sink immediately because there's someone out there who does have both of those skills Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you're not going to be any competition for them. No matter how good your mixes are, people will, gravitate towards someone that they're personally comfortable with who gives a comparable product. Absolutely. Wow. That's, that's really important. That's yeah. really important. I've never thought about it that way. So you can't be too controlling and you, you also, you got to make them feel comfortable enough. Cause I mean, what you do, what you're doing is creative collaboration. Yeah. So if you're going to be collaborating in a creative manner, then they're going to need to feel comfortable around you so that they can express themselves to optimal potential. Yeah, absolutely. And that that is huge, like making someone feel comfortable because I mean it it this is another analogy that I'm I'm stealing from someone else. Shout out to this guy named Chris Graham. Uh he he says like imagine the feeling of like the the nerves and the anxiety of taking a picture of yourself naked and putting it online, like all your social media, you know, completely bare and exposed and raw. That's what it's like on an emotional level to record music. You know, this is like the, the output of your creative soul. Mm. This is raw. It's bare. This is the naked picture of your soul in audio form, Mm. you know, So if that person, you know, whoever is making the music is not comfortable, you're not going to get the best representation. You're not going to have the best final product. Wow. That's, that's really, I, I like how extreme that example is Mm -hmm. that comparison. Cause I mean, you're very open for criticism, very open for critique. Yeah. In a multitude of ways. Yep. Oh, Absolutely. their voice sounds really weird there. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That that makes me have a lot more respect for one audio engineers, but also artists as a whole. Just yeah. just uh the um, creative element of music as a Absolutely. whole. Absolutely. It 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 can be so popularized and glamorized. It's mm-hmm. it's very easy to look past those very like human elements. It's a good point. It's a good point. So do you think, I don't know, I, I feel like uh, I always like to bring up Kanye uh-huh. it, as like an example, but I feel like he's kind of a tragic hero and has like a lot of like clear flaws or faults, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. And um, do you think any of his, I don't want to say he's insane, but he has some insane tendencies. <laughs> you know what I Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So do you think... Uh, do you think he? Do you think that's a result of the music and like the, what he puts himself to create such a great product, mm-hmm. or do you think that's just like who he is? Or it, this is hard to speculate. It, We're only it, speculating. It really is. It is pure speculation. Mm-hmm. And admittedly, I am very far from familiar with Kanye. You know, I I see the BuzzFeed posts and stuff like that when he does something especially crazy. You know, mm-hmm. when when he goes out wearing a MAGA hat. You know, right. I know about that stuff, but that's about it. 
Um, but I, I would say, you know, especially given his absolutely immense world fame, it, it has to be a culmination of all of those things. His, Get you know, blind. the, the environment that he's in now, the kind of things he's surrounded with, uh, Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about insanity. Um, but that as well with a, a very naturally creative spirit. Wow. So it creative spirit implying like like there there is some um I don't want to say room for insanity, but I mean I, I I think anyone creative is at least a little more open to insanity. Okay, than, than that's what I people. thought you were getting at. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think, I think for there's sure. isn't there some quote along the line or some some uh statement along the line of like there's a fine line between creativity and insanity or something like that. Something, greatness and insanity or, or something along those lines. But yeah, um, it is often a very fine line. I would say almost always a very fine line and uh, oftentimes even an overlapping line. Wow. Um, yeah. Wonder, I, that's something I want to gain a better understanding of, mm. like why that is. Yeah. These these cr- like crazy achievers. Why and- why and not only that, why are people pushed to that, mm-hmm. but also are, are driven to that? You know, why do they push themselves to that place? But also, why are humans as a whole so drawn to that, so fascinated by it, wow. so empowered and and influenced by that? What would your so to the second statement? Why are humans so drawn to like like greatness like michael jordan like uh tiger woods like these these insane mentality of an athlete or insane mentality of just a human being as a whole Mm -hmm. and then they have these uh these obsessive characteristics and proclivities that carry over into kind of their demise simultaneously Mm -hmm. do you like like what why do you think that is why do you think humans I, I, I mean, we're, we we can only speculate here. Sure, yeah. Maybe are we just obsessed with greatness as a culture or as – Well, as, you know, again, how do you define greatness and where where exactly is the line between greatness and creativity and insanity and perfection? Um, but I, you know, I I really don't know. It's, it's an age-old question. Um, I, I think a lot of people are drawn to it sort of in a weird way as the way that your friend at the bar who just kept saying, like, you don't even know, you know, sort of that same type of relationship where, like, in a lot of cases, I think these these greats, these great people just don't know how not to. They're mm. doing what they have to because they don't know how to not. They'd be insane without it. Yeah. They and- come across as insane – with it, <laughs> but they would actually be driven to insanity without it, you know, if wow. they, were, they were suppressed of that expression or that craft or whatever else they do. Uh-huh. Wow, so that's wild. I, I, I think that people are drawn to that, um, you know, and especially just because, uh, you know, so many great people are just different. They're, they're atypical, and people are fascinated by that to a certain extent, but especially the factor of they don't know how else to be like these people who are doing these crazy things don't know uh-huh. they can't do anything else they're they're doing what comes naturally to them and because that's different that's atypical other people are fascinated by it that's wild to think about that's wild to think about that's also a good point bringing up with like how is greatness defined in mm-hmm. x y and z yeah i wonder if uh, i don't know i don't know especially with art I think it's even more interesting to analyze because with with sports, there's like statistical backings. There's, sure, very uh, very quantitative. Absolutely, yeah. very quantitative, very tangible, and and also it, uh, it's interesting to analyze from like a sports point of view because it's kind of uh, relatable in a way because mm-hmm. a lot of people have played basketball or played soccer and they're like, sure, wow, like that's hard. That's, yeah. that's hard what he is doing right there. Yeah. And he's doing it against the like Again, people that would destroy me. Yeah. 
it's very tangible mm -hmm. and it, it's easy for people to relate to because everybody has done something physical at one point and mm -hmm. they can they can they sort of have a reference point for how extreme what these people are doing are whereas art is so subjective you know it's oftentimes not as relatable um but it it I don't know how else to put it, you know, uh, not everybody has a reference point for like a starting point, you know, everybody has played a little league sport mm -hmm. almost. So everybody has that starting reference point. Not everybody has a starting reference point for these works of art or creations that other people are making. But there's still like just as much of an industry, just as much of a, uh, an appreciation of it. But it's Sometimes, like a different yeah. types. It's like a different type of appreciation. It's almost like humans have like a predisposition because who, who to like music. So it's like like who doesn't like music? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and it, I would it, I would actually argue like kind of bring after bringing up some of these points that music is liked and entertained. So it, they it, it is differently than sports. Mm -hmm. So like like sports and entertainment both fall under. Or what am I saying? Sports and music, or sports and anything creative, uh, kind of fall under the same category of entertainment. But they're probably liked for very different reasons. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. They're such such. I don't want to say opposites, but mm -hmm. so so many worlds apart in so many regards. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very fascinating that those very different things can appeal so broadly to so many of the same human beings yeah absolutely absolutely wow i think i think uh human beings just also like the uh archetype of somebody just being great as well yeah which is probably why we're drawn to them in in different ways yep yep i would definitely agree it's a cool topic it's a it cool is topic. it is pretty fascinating i'd never really spent too much time pondering that or, or thinking about that, but I, I feel like I, I will. It's a lot I feel of like I'll definitely, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely think about that a little bit more in the future. Yeah, it's a. There's actually a book by I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I, I know the name. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I've I've recently been introduced to him, mm -hmm. and I think I right. I think. I started a book called The Tipping Point by him. Okay. But he has another book that I have not read. I actually bought it recently, but I haven't started it. But it's uh, it's called Outliers. Okay. And apparently the premise is something along the lines of like these just great achievers. And and uh, something – I've had this like verbally explained to me by a buddy actually on a podcast as well. Uh -huh. But he, he said that I'll, they are very relentless – like a lot of these people, like he, he yeah. used the example of like Bill Gates yeah. and just having this relentlessness to them. Like no matter what they're going, they're not going to stop. Yeah. That is, that is a really interesting, uh, sort of, uh, you know, characteristic that can bridge the gap between, you know, say great athletes and great artists. Mm. Um, something that is sort of universal to great people, um, is that they can be incredibly relentless. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, maybe we're drawn to the the idea of like fate and destiny as well. Hmm. Okay. How do you tie that in? I'm interested. Like, uh, it's almost like, wow. Um, I, I want to use different examples. Steve Jobs was destined to be a tech entrepreneur and change the world. Mm -hmm. He's he was just that great of a person. Yeah. It's almost like people like the idea of like in like he was innately that way. He was yeah. innately this incredible human being. Interesting. Yeah. But like how easily could that have changed? Good point. One little thing in his life could have changed and it would have redirected his whole trajectory. True. True. Especially with him specifically. There yeah. are a lot of, uh, yeah, no doubt. Variables. No doubt. It, it really puts your, your whole perception and idea of destiny and, and fate into, you know, it, it, really makes it so much more fragile mm -hmm. um or it conversely i guess it could strengthen it depending on how you think about it um but uh, they persevered look look how close they came to failing and they persevered right right or like 
uh, more in the sense of all of these tiny things aligned just perfectly. Oh, okay. You know, uh, and if they hadn't, this person never would have been. But because they did align in that sense, that makes the the idea of destiny and fate so much true, uh, mm. so much more true. Um, you know, it it strengthens the whole idea as opposed to the opposite view where it's like, well, it was just happenstance. All these things just happened to line up perfectly. True, true. Yeah, that's a that's crazy analyzing the story and like it's like, wow, that was a make or break point for them and they yeah. made it. Yeah, seriously. Maybe we're drawn to the story of these individuals as I well. I think that's definitely part of it. Just yeah. like the uh, the narrative of the archetype, the history of the archetype. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That it's it's always been interesting to me that archetypes even exist. Mm-hmm. You know, there are universal characters, archetypes that are consistent across almost all cultures on this planet. Mm-hmm. What is it about those specific characters, you know, the hero, the, the, the strong man, whatever else it may be, why, why is that so universal? It's really interesting. That is um, interesting. That it, it's something that can be so consistent across human psychology, environment, circumstance, culture, you know, but these things still exist, like these very specific images mm-hmm. of characters. That is really interesting to analyze. I know Joseph Campbell has talked about that before, like the the hero's journey and how there's mm-hmm. there's always uh, certain elements, like you were saying, like uh, it gets really climatic at points, and I I don't remember exactly what it is, but sure, the the, the build up and then the fall, yeah, and then yeah, they, the, they the, the story arc, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. I've Very actually I've heard Jordan Peterson talk about something similar with uh, really, yeah, it was something along the lines of like. It was, it was, oh, I forgot what the example was, but there, it was like an archetype of, cause Disney does this. Disney does this a okay. lot with like the different archetypes, but uh-huh. it was something along the lines of the archetype of a hero. Uh, I don't know if it, this relates to masculinity or not, but in, independently of that, of the hero that takes on uncertainty without fear, like mm. with courage. And mm. that's like that's a very appealing archetype to human beings. Interesting. That's, yeah, the whole concept of bravery. Mm. Very interesting. Because I, I, maybe maybe we like seeing this in ourselves. Or yeah, yeah I was gonna say maybe you you basically went exactly where I was about to go. Like maybe it's it's fulfilling to ourselves in certain ways because it's it's you know something we'd like to see in ourselves. So when. Um, or, or something that you would like to think that you would do. So when you see that, it, it's, uh, it's gratification in a sense. It's, it's, it's like the human innate predisposition to gratification mm-hmm. and also um, just admiration. It's, yeah. it's like we admiration want to and admire. Praise. Like yeah. even, even those that we admire, admire somebody else, hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah it's true. Even that is... That is a really interesting jump, even those at, you know, that you would consider to be the top, the top of the top, the very best, the very greatest, the most successful, whatever it may be, they have someone else that they think is the top of the top and the mm. very greatest. That's such, that's such a crazy thought. That is. It's also, it's really empowering too. It's like, yeah, it's like, dude, I know you look up to that person, but they, they look up to somebody else mm. and that person before them probably looked up to somebody else. Yeah. It kind of goes back to take on that responsibility to go out into life and try to be an example. That's something to yeah. strive for. That's, that's a cool thought. That's a that cool is, thought. That is. That is. A, I feel like that's a very empowering thought regardless of what level you're at, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like you're working at Burger King. It's like how can I, how can I leave a memorable impression – upon this individual so that later on maybe they go home and they're like, wow, that person – actually, I have an example. Like I met this girl at Wendy's like months ago and I was like, uh-huh. wow, she was really charismatic. She was really, really nice and she's Interesting. working at, at Wendy's and I kind of – Okay, so she was an employee there. She was like a, a server. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was like, this lady is so nice and so happy 
but she's working at Wendy's. Not not two things that you you typically put together. Sure, oh, that's that's she. I mean, I, I'm talking about her right now. Like this was yeah. months ago. It's like wow, that and lady. She made that much of a mark on you. Absolutely, left that much of an impression. It's crazy. That is. This is a cool conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's fascinating when you 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 know humans are so diverse, but we we always have these. They're like core values, characteristics, motivators that are mm-hmm. universal across so many people. And it's so cool to see them arise in different parts of the world yeah. that are separated by distance or maybe even oceans. Yeah, independently. Mm-hmm. Also, like our, our, our need for – not need, but our uh, – I guess our desire to explain the natural world and why are we here and like mm-hmm. religion to kind of be the antidote antidote mm-hmm. for that. And you see that arising in all these different cultures is really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's, it's another very basic driving factor of humanity. Every, every race, every people that has ever been has a creation story. It's, I mean, if, if, I don't know if you haven't if you haven't taken the time to stop and think, or or taken on the self awareness to stop and think and be like, "Yo, why am I here? Mm-hmm. What is my purpose? What's the purpose of other people in my life? Or what, what is the purpose of this whole thing that yeah. humanity has going? Like, what is this? Wh- why? Why? Like, I, I think that's a really important question to ask. And clearly, it's been asked for. X amount of years Uh, before. Yeah, however long you believe the world has existed. True. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, which is a whole other topic. Yeah, true. We don't don't need to go down that rabbit hole, but... (laughs) Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Should we switch up topics? Yeah, absolutely. I think I have something written down. Okay, what you got? Let's pick this up so I don't have to move my head. Oh, we talked about that. Uh, Oh, oh. I, I really liked our conversation the other day. Um, so we were talking about like troubleshooting and like how mm. you will uh, you will edit and engineer these audio files and it, it, it corrects me if I'm butchering like any of this, but uh, you will edit and engineer these like audio files to reach optimal uh, production value mm. and you absolutely love the meticulous detail. You love the research that goes into it for, and the troubleshooting that if you were doing this for something else that you didn't have interest in, it would be like hell on earth. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Definitely. definitely. Um, so this this conversation we're referring to was uh, sort of in regards, I, I helped you get some new equipment set up in your podcast studio and, uh, you know, we, we went through a bit of trial and error trying to get everything set up, but afterwards you made the remark that, uh, you know, you're like, wow, you're really resourceful the way you problem solve through that. Um, and I, I think that that is not necessarily inherent to audio, but audio is definitely something that has helped me develop that skill, Mm -hmm. um, because, so much, not everything, because my my degree is in audio, um, but so much of what I have learned has been self-taught. Um, and again, we're tying back into that access to information and the avail- availability and accessibility. Um, but uh, through teaching myself about this stuff, I've, I've developed or, or tried to develop, am still developing uh, this this. Uh, trial and error method where like I am when it's something that I want to do and I want to get it done I'll I'll sit at it and try at it and keep at it for you know as long as it takes until it gets done and uh, you know I'll I'll pull from resources everywhere I can find them uh, particularly the internet you know it's it's huge and unavoidable Um, but just being resourceful in other ways you know, it, it's, it's really cultivated that in me. Um, so, and that absolutely carries over to my work. And that's another thing I love about audio is that there is absolutely a place for that kind of thinking. And I think it's kind of necessary in this line of work to have a little bit of that, uh, that troubleshooting, 
DIY mentality, um, as, as it is in so many areas of production and media, um, you know, there's always just, there's, there's a way to make it work. You just have to find it. And Mm -hmm. the, the creative problem solving is, is intoxicating. You know, when you find a way to make something happen, no matter how crazy it is, Uh that broadens the scope for the next problem you have to solve. And you have more to pull from. You have the, the lens of where you can go to solve something is that much wider, you know? Um, you can, you can go so many more ways with it. And there are always multiple ways to solve a problem. Good uh, point. Good point. So. That's, yeah, that's really cool. And it's like, oh, this problem's similar to this problem. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wait, this same solver doesn't work for this. Okay, troubleshoot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and even just learning what mindsets and approaches work for certain types of problems, Mm -hmm. even if it's not the exact same kind of problem, you know, not the exact same issue, you can think back to how you solved kind of a similar issue and bring back that same mindset that you had going into that issue and apply it to this next issue that isn't the same, but kind of related. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Similar logic kind of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You just get better over time. Yep. It's cool to think like these, uh, and this is kind of an abstract thought, I guess, in a way, but uh, it's cool to think of like problems that, like we were saying earlier, that you, you, it'd be like hell on earth for you if you had to face these problems for something you didn't necessarily see the end result, the end goal, or if it's just simply sure. something you don't like. And um, it's almost like these problems are like, consistent tests to be like, Hey, how bad do you really want it? Yeah. How bad do you really want it? And, and that, and and every, every problem you solve is mm -hmm. one step closer. It's another notch in your belt, so to speak. And, uh, it, it just, you know, it strengthens you that much more. Absolutely. Which I I think that's a parallel in trying to achieve like anything really. Yeah. In a in a lot of ways. Yep. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, it's, it's cliche, but trust the process. It, like, it really does make a lot of sense because that process is uh, it's what builds you. And yeah. I, I don't know. It just kind of – it makes sense in a lot of ways too. Just I think anybody can kind of do this. If you if you pursued like any goal or anything worth pursuing, were it meaningful enough to chase after, to go after, like I think the end result and what you gained – throughout that process, it, it really does make a lot of sense that that's kind of the most precious thing about the entire thing. Yeah. It like throughout the entire struggle and throughout all of it. And again, I, I think that that phrase gets used a lot, but I also think it's a little bit underexplained. And I think mm-hmm. people, I don't want to say they use it ignorantly, but I think they might use it a little, oblivious and naive to the the true meaning of it what it yeah, actually yeah. means i think that's fair it, it kind of ties back to the whole you know everybody's heard it's not about the the destination it's about the journey you know but i think that's absolutely applicable to your goals as well mm-hmm. like the final you know achievement you're trying to get whether it's it's winning a specific award for your work or attaining you know getting the job you've always wanted whatever it may be uh, that individual achievement is not what makes you, you know, it's the process that you went through while trying to get there mm. that really forms you and, and gives you the skills to, you know, do what you do. That's so true. So true. It's also, I, I guess it's kind of interesting and not interesting. It's important to kind of speculate and imagine like, what if I if I pursue this, what will the end result be? Mm-hmm. What will uh? Because I mean, you're gonna get a very different outcome if you try if you're if you're trying to pursue cocaine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting I don't think many people, pursuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think many people sit down and they're like, you know what? Yeah. I need to start doing more coke. Uh, <laughs> I I think some people probably have. Yeah, true, but. true. <laughs> you know what my life needs more of? Yeah, some blow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, versus um. 
I don't know. What, I, I want to start pursuing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Financial accounting. It's just, mm-hmm. I just think it's important to see like, like, okay, where's this going to get me and who am I going to become is a really important question. Yeah. Five years down the road, yeah. 10 years down the road. Like, How's what, this journey going to mold me? Absolutely. Yeah. I like how you worded that. I like how you worded that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, again, it's easy to think in terms of the final goal mm-hmm. and just be like, once I hit this, I'll be successful, you know, I will have attained success, I'll be great, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. Um, but uh, it, it's easy to discount or ignore what the the process, you know, how that will affect you, how it'll form you, what, Absolutely. what kind of person it will create in you. It's interesting. It's interesting to think about. Yeah. So how how do you think the process of deciding, Hey, I want to be an audio engineer. How, like, how do you think this journey has molded you specifically? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, it, it, it's definitely, you know, like we were talking about, it's built my problem solving skills Mm -hmm. in, in ways that I never would have imagined. Um, I already had a, a little bit of a tendency towards the, the whole trial and error idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but this has definitely like strengthened that and truly instilled that in me as like part of my makeup, you know? Um, and it also goes back to, I mean, it, it's impacted everything that I do. You know, it's, it's one of those things like we were talking about earlier. It's always on the back burner. Every nugget of knowledge that I collect, every person I speak with or connection I make, the immediate thought, is how does this apply to what I want to do? You know, how can I make this work for me? Um, and that that attitude shift is not necessarily recent. I think I started kind of doing that subconsciously a long time ago, um, but I've become more aware of it recently. And again, that's another skill that I'm trying to develop. Mm. Um so I, I think that's that's sort of a skill in and of itself. This whole, and not not necessarily particular to audio, but particular to having a passion that I want to make into a career kind of thing. Um, it, it's made me more self reflective and self aware, mm. and I'm able to pull. I'm, I'm learning to pull these these sort of subconscious processes out of the ether and look at them and be like, well, this, this is actually something I could develop. This is something I should develop because it's a skill that can be very beneficial and like, you know, help keeping me push up the, the stairs Mm -hmm. in a sense, um, take another step up, you know? Um, so that, I mean, it's, it's just such a broad question you know, because it really has like affected everything. Wow, that's weird to think about. It's wild to think about. Yeah. And did you did you whenever you first kind of made kind of pulled the trigger, made the decision like this is what I um, want to do? Did you think this might be the result, or did you did it was it simple as simple enough as I enjoy doing this? Let's do it. You know when. When I first got into audio, um, I, I had sort of a, an inclination towards it, I guess. So I started, as most audio engineers do, started out like as a musician. Okay. You know, uh, I didn't know how I, that's how uh, most people start. That's cool. Most, most do, yeah. Um, especially these days. Like in the past, you could sort of be like more of that technician type of person Uh where like, you know how the technology works and you know how to, how to manipulate it in your favor. Um, but it seems like a very way of like analytical way of thinking versus like the artist approach would be like Mm -hmm. more, you get the creative element, which is, which is far more common these days. Okay. And I think this also ties into the, the trial and error problem solving mentality that we were talking about. Cause it's like, well, I, you know, I'm in, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I, I kind of know how to play a guitar now. Um, how do I like 
make this stick around? Mm -hmm. How do I capture that? Um, so, you know, started with like, I, I had my dad's like ancient, it's like a, I want to say like a 2002 MacBook or something like that. And, uh, you know, I would use that to like record my, my band at the time, you know, and I just go and set the computer down on the floor in front of a drum set mm -hmm. and click record and run into the next room and just let that go. Um, but, um, so that's kind of how it started, but like music was always the, the driving factor. You know, I, I sort of had that, like, I want to be a rock star kind of vibe. Um, I, I played in a band like all through high school and early college and oh, like, cool. all around, uh, like all around the four States area, you know, travel a little bit, like had some, had some music out and all that stuff. But, um, that was always like the That's driving sick. force. And then even when I pulled the trigger, so to speak on audio, um, I was, you know, coming out of high school, honestly, didn't even want to mess with college. Uh -huh. Like wanted to graduate, go out, hit the road with, you know, live in a, a smelly van with all my buddies and, and play music every night. Um, I love it. I love it. I, I, I still, you know, still have some regrets that I could never make that happen. Uh -huh. Um, but you know, not unhappy with, with how things have gone. Okay. So, absolutely. But, um, you probably went the more sustainable route. Which is something to be grateful for. Yes, I I think so. And honestly, I I have my parents to thank for this. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was it was the kind of thing where like if you don't go to college right after high school, mm -hmm. you're out. Oh, like, like you're you're, on, you're your own. on your own. You know, don't expect any help, kind of thing. Wow. Um. So savages. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> little little harsh, but. Smart in a lot of regards. Tough love. Um, Tough love. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, I decided that audio was going to be a solution to another problem, which was, you know, uh, how can I keep my parents happy and go to school and do something more sustainable, but also tie it into what my passion is. Okay. So, which at the time was music and still is music. Um, now that perspective has shifted a little bit, you know, um, cause I'm no longer the performer as frequently anyhow. Um, but you understand the performing side. Sure. Yeah. Which gives you a lot of benefits, I'm sure. Yep. So my, my love for audio was really birthed out of a love for music. And, uh, you know, I decided to go to school for it and really just like everything blossomed from there. It sounds like a really healthy beginning to your, so. uh, to your craft. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was, you know, started in a very organic state. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's funny. Cause, uh, I, I, I always like to analyze like how things get started. Like kind of the um the ripple effect you might say like yeah yeah that's a really as, cool way to put it like how uh, like this led to this and this led to this and it's, it's so cool how you um i don't know maybe you did so you just picked up a guitar and then after did you teach yourself how to play or uh mostly self taught yeah uh i where did that desire come so from so i my my dad plays guitar okay. so there was always like a guitar around um funnily enough for a long time I, I really resisted playing guitar because uh -huh. my dad played guitar, you know, that whole that whole uh I want to be better angsty. than my parents. I want to well, be different, different than, my than my parents. Yeah. I yeah. don't I don't want to be my parents. Absolutely. Kind of thing. Um which is a, a really stupid attitude, but everybody goes through it. Oh, you know, absolutely. angsty, angsty teens and all that fun stuff. But uh so then when I Started getting a little bit older, you know, junior high band and stuff. Uh -huh. Some of my buddies had guitars and started learning to play and like playing in the school jazz band and stuff. And then I started seeing, I was like, oh, this is actually like kind of a cool thing. This isn't a thing my goofy dad does, you know. So there was that inspiration. And then because my dad had a guitar at home, I also just so happened to have access. Wow. So. I, I oh I love that thought. I love that thought. It's like your dad picked up a guitar, mm -hmm. which led to you 
pretty much your, yeah, the end result is your career choice. In a lot of ways, yeah. It's like, what made your dad want to pick up a guitar? It's like, <laughs> it's so crazy to think John about John Mellencamp. That stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> it's one of his favorite bands. Okay. But. Uh, wow, that's that's really cool. Just how, how things kind of, uh, yeah. how, yeah. I don't know, I guess you your life was impacted by your decisions previously. Before and, I was even born. Yeah, that's wild. That that's is wild. a that is a really cool concept to start thinking about. Wow. Yeah. Because I would argue, honestly, uh, and that that starts playing back in with our whole conversation about destiny and fate. Yeah. And all good that. point. Good yeah. point. And like, how much is it chance? How yeah. much is just random? I I don't know. That's that's weird to think about. Yeah, it is. For for my own life, like. If I had to break down like why I'm sitting here with you right now, why why I have a podcast in general, mm-hmm. I would say it started because I do you know who Smosh is? I I do. Uh my I was never really a fan, uh-huh. uh, but my younger brother was just so deep into oh, them no way. for a long time. He was yeah. in too deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. yeah, it's uh yeah, I watched one of their videos in fourth grade and then I was like that's cool. You can just make videos with your buddies. And <laughs> I, I was like, it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was just it, like we said, like subconsciously, it was always that thing in the back of my head. So, yep. And I just never had the resources to like actually execute it. And, uh, also didn't have much free time. Like, like we talked about before, like high school was pretty, uh, time strenuous and sure. whatnot. And then I pretty much long story short, got the resources in college, uh, and the free time in college. Cause I originally played college soccer and yep. then I quit and I was like, what and then do you finally I do now? had the, the access and the opportunity. Absolutely. And the drive. Absolutely. Yep. I was so like lost without, without, with all that free time. And then, uh, pretty much started, I made YouTube videos for like a semester and mm-hmm. I, I liked it. I really liked it at first, but I was like, ah, I don't love this though. And sure. I, I lost interest. And then I started on the vine app, mm-hmm. um, yep. short, yep. actually that next summer. So it, it was literally like, transition from youtube over to vine and actually saw a little bit of success on that i don't know nice. if i ever told you that but i i knew you had made vines i didn't know like to if, if it was to any success or not absolutely absolutely yeah it's uh i had i had one so half of my success was uh pretty much uh half of my success was one vine that went viral and i i hit about five million loops which was holy shit really yeah, it was pretty wild that's man. crazy like wow. I, I random people are just texting me like, "Hey, I saw your Vaughn. Hey, I saw your Vaughn. Like uh-huh. that's crazy, and kind of a cool, cool yeah, little thing. That's wild. Yeah. And then um, got into that and same deal, same deal. I really liked doing that. I really had, liked having like that creative outlet. Mm-hmm. And uh, that experience is actually more marketable to employers now because yeah, I'm going into advertising really and promotions. Thought. So like. Yeah. That's and you, you really have that out. like, hey, I made a viral video one time. Like, exactly. How many people can say that? Exactly. And uh, so I ended up hitting at the the end result, the end amount of like my stats or whatever you want to call uh-huh. it. I hit forty thousand followers, which was pretty cool. Yeah, and then uh, ten million loops total. Wow. So wow, total but, on all your vines. Yes, yes. Wow. But e- even that, like, even with the numbers, lost their uh, meaning after a little bit. Uh-huh. Like, oddly enough, to say it, I did that for a while. I did that for about a year, year and a half. With the last half. Half year was uh, I, I I lost interest probably about a, mm-hmm. about twelve months in and life happened other things sure. started to take my interest and started to do other things. Yep. But um, yeah, yeah. I I just even even with like the success or whatever you want to say, like I still lost interest with that. And then that and then I got really into po- listening to podcasts. And then after shortly after that, I was like, you know what? This would be cool. I should just start one of these things. Yeah, and then I, and then I ended up starting with my grandpa, and then. Uh, so your grandpa was your first guest. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. I started. I I'm that. like, let's see if I even like this. I just yeah. did like six with my grandpa, j- literally just the video camera, just uh-huh. the video camera, and then um, after that, I probably about two three months later, some flip of the switch in my head went off, and I'm like, you know what? Let's start hitting this harder, and then I started hitting up all my friends. I'm like, let's go and. And, nice. um, yeah, it's just, it's just built, built, built. And it's, it's been a very like existential answer to an existential question of like what I want to do as a hobby 
mm -hmm. one that could maybe turn into like something more like monetarily sure. to support myself. Yep. Uh, not in a greedy sense, just like, what could I do that I love yeah. that makes money? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, so it's it's been like a real cool like answer to that, but it's also I the the reason I didn't really invest in mics or anything like that is I really wanted to make sure that this was something that was more than that gave me more lasting sustainable fulfillment mm -hmm. than my finds did. Yeah. So I like uh in just doing those those creative things I'm like am I going to lose interest in this? And uh, I was very I tried to be very realistic with myself. So I've been I've been doing it for a year and a half now and I really do I this sounds crazy but I I just don't think I can get bored of talking with people. There are just yeah. so many interesting people and I love I've and always been a literally limitless topics. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's I, I decided to pull the trigger as you've helped me with and thank you again Absolutely. on getting some mics but I I think this is something I'm going to stick with. I don't I just don't see any reason why I'd quit. And if I took a few months off, so be it. I don't even think that'll happen, but who who knows? Who knows where but life if you will go? You'd come back more rested, more refreshed and so, hit it even better than ever. Like we said before. Yeah, yep. exactly. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> oh, I love it. And then I'd be a different version of myself and yeah, hopefully a better version and yeah, one step closer to greatness. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So I just I just thought I'd give you a little quick rundown since we're yeah. kind of exchanging stories and whatnot. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that's super cool. I I'd, I'd never heard your your like beginning story like yeah. that. Uh so that's really cool. And it's cool too cuz uh the transition from starting that was because I quit my sport for the first time in my life. And uh, so now the, I like to say that like podcasting is my new sport. Yeah, there you go. Which is cool. Uh, <laughs> when, when I stopped playing soccer was when I started playing music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yep, kind of a funny parallel in that sense. I you you that. stuck with it a little longer than I did. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So when did you start playing actually? When? Uh, yeah. When did you start playing soccer? Uh, Ooh, I'm going to have a hard time remembering when I started, uh, my parents actually had me in like little league baseball oh, for cool. uh, the the first few years that I was able to, um, and I want to say Granby started its little league soccer program in like rec league probably when I was in like second third grade. Something oh wow! Like that. Okay, yeah. So you played. So that's cool. I, that you did three v three, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that happened just like totally organically in a really weird way mm. um so granby just had a rec league at first uh -huh. but uh and it was just like you know run by the city you know um most of the the coaches out there didn't know what the hell they were doing you know um my my future then future 3v3 coach called it a beehive ball you know because uh -huh. everybody just hives around the ball and yeah. chases it around and kicks it and then when someone finally gets the ball and breaks out everyone just yells boot it you know <laughs> <laughs> down the field as far as you can even if there's nobody there uh -huh. um so that that's the kind of stuff i started with but um there's this guy named ron forgy who actually turned into like a really really uh you know motivational inspirational uh influence sort of influence yeah in my life um and someone who i still consider myself to be very lucky and privileged to have met and had that kind of relationship with but wow he lived in granby um and uh or in the area and had this like past of coaching soccer and like had he he was an older guy mm -hmm. and uh you know had a an adult daughter who he had coached all growing up and got into coaching because she loved soccer um and you know there was the opportunity he learned all about it and got really really into it and oh, got wow. really really good at it um so it just so happened that in this tiny ass farm town uh -huh. where i grew up there's a guy who knows all about soccer and he wound up picking up me and a few other local kids uh -huh. who he saw some potential in and put together this traveling team that's out crazy of this group of you know beehive ball uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, that's this really cool. This tiny little rec league. Uh -huh. And he, he took a, found this hodgepodge, you know, group of guys 
and whipped us into shape and ended up taking us to the national finals. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Was it like exclusively a, uh, a like just 3v3? It, it was for the most part. We uh-huh. had a couple endeavors there where we like, as a team, we tried to find a way to play more frequently uh-huh. locally. Um, so there was like, there was a team up in Joplin, Carthage area that we kind of like merged with for a while. Okay. Um, and tried to play with. And I like, we never really found a good place for all of us to fit. So 3 um, 3 was a good fit because you you had a very uh, exclusive few. Yeah, yeah, we due to we, like limited we had, population. We had a really strong team uh-huh. and a good group of guys who were, you know, we we all worked really well together. We were all the same age. We all, you know, went to school together and a lot of us grew up with each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a very, you know, very specific group. Um, that came together out of happenstance, but, um, and, and, you know, Ron's coaching style was, was very unique as well. I think that had a lot to do with it and also a lot to do with why none of us really continued to play that much after, Uh um, after he retired. Um, we, we just never really found another place that really scratched that itch in the way that playing with that group with that coach did. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Do you think there are any like parallels or values or maybe lessons that have carried over from soccer over into like your music? Mm, that's really interesting. Um, I mean, of course, like soccer was my my first real team experience, uh-huh. you know. Like I said, I played little league ball before that, baseball, but that's that's I don't think baseball is as much of a team sport, you know, as something like soccer or, or even basketball or football. Is. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, but uh, so it, it definitely taught me a lot about, you know, what it means to be on a team and how to function well within a group. Um, but I, I would honestly say um, a lot of what I learned and, and what I would say carries over into music Mm -hmm. um really came from ron the coach uh because he he was just this so atypical for a coach you know he i there was never an instance where we ran like you know suicides whatever else you think about Mm -hmm. laps never not once he was patient and relentless in a mm-hmm. lot of senses, but never, um, he, he was never a retaliator in that sense. Okay. Um, there was never like real punishment. It was all about constructive criticism and future growth and learning from the mistakes we made. So I think, I think I would say that's probably like the biggest takeaway that I had from that experience. Um, and that a lot of that carries in uh, to how I try to interact with the people around me. I was about to say the same thing. It's like the way you, because uh, you're talking about your first uh, experience with like collaboration and yeah, working like cohesively absolutely. to as a group to, to a, achieve a goal. Absolutely. Yeah. And also your your uh, his approach to constructive criticism as well. Mm-hmm. That's cool to think about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it, I've, I just find it so fascinating how those things kind of, um, I guess a lot of core principles carry over into a lot of endeavors. Mm-hmm. Yep. Especially definitely. whenever it's like goal oriented specifically. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting to think about. But yeah, I mean, you know, like we were talking about, everything's a ripple effect. There's mm-hmm. always, always a carryover from one event or one experience that like, it's almost inevitable that it will touch pretty much every part of your life in some way, shape, or form. Good point. Good point. Which is why you should go through to the best of your ability as like a student. It's like, where can I learn this? Or what can I learn from this experience? Mm -hmm. Even when that question is hard to answer, which I I definitely know there have been times in my life I'm like, why? Why why is this happening? Why is this? What am I gaining? What am I learning from this? Yep. Yep. Why is this necessary? uh, Not like a blaming sense, but it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, not to not to get too like, I don't know, hippie with it, but like everything's connected. You know, everything mm-hmm. is going to affect everything else. It's all part of the same thing, no matter how distant. You know, two different events or two different experiences or goals may seem. Uh-huh. It's all going to come in contact in some way at some time. It's a good point. It's a good point. Interconnectedness is really interesting. And it's it's really interesting to like consider <laughs> from like um I guess you could say like the the hippie philosophical route. But then I love whenever there's like a scientific explanation. Cause I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a buddy, I don't I don't it's think always he'd... satisfying in a way because you you always feel so out there when uh-huh. you say stuff like that. Absolutely. But then when there's science, you're just like, yes, yes, I told you. <laughs> I, I need an explanation, yeah. so I sound less crazy. Yeah, exactly. Now I sound factual. And now, reasonable. now I know that my weird, crazy thoughts are like, you know, they're real. Uh huh. So. Instead of just blaming it on my intuition, right? <laughs> I had a feeling, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Because I, I had a buddy who was explaining like interconnectedness and his like rudimentary understanding of like how that ties into like um, quantum physics. Mm, this sounds like an Alex conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That does. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it wasn't Alex, but I, I guarantee we've gotten into similar something. waters. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That's funny. That's funny. Because he, he's able to think in, like, those abstract ways, but also, like, very factually as well. Yep. At least yep. That, that's how I perceive him. To yeah, be, no, he, he's a really good example of that. Um, so Alex is this guy that you and I both know that I lived with for a couple years. I, don't, I actually don't know how you met Alex, uh-huh. but he is how you and I met. I and met him through Nick Schilf, if you know who I know is. Nick, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow, that's how I that's met him. that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, but anyhow... Uh, Alex is a really great example of kind of what we were talking about, how like when these ethereal, weird, out there, intangible ideas become grounded by like more hard science, um, he is like the physical embodiment of that statement. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> he is an incredibly intelligent guy, both emotionally and I would say spiritually and uh but also intellectually absolutely and he, and he socially knows as well. and socially as well yeah um he is one of the most outgoing i think accidentally outgoing people i've ever met what do you mean by that <laughs> i mean like you can't take that guy to the park or the grocery store without him making friends with five random people no way really yeah yeah for real i guess usually whenever i hang out with them it's usually like pretty one-on-one or like mm-hmm. us and like a, a friend or two or whatever but that, yep. that's funny oh wow yeah i didn't realize he was so extroverted that's that's yeah. awesome wow yeah it's nuts he can start a conversation with anyone and of course you know what he's like like he makes friends so fast wow so he he was honestly like inspiring to live with in uh-huh. that sense just like being in such close proximity with uh-huh. someone like that because i was just like it, it kind of showed me in a lot of ways all the things that i was doing wrong socially uh-huh. um and kind of kind of helped me start to open up to like meeting people and being a little more sociable okay absolutely um, so that was that was really cool. Now that you say that, he came over to my house one time and introduced himself to everybody like in the in the room. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he definitely like. And again, I don't I don't think that he like I don't think it's a strategy. You uh-huh. know, it's not necessarily thought out. It almost feels it's very organic, which is kind of why I say it almost. He's like accidentally extroverted. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, he he like. There's no way you know he could show up at a house party. And there's no way that before he leaves, every person in that house doesn't know him. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it, I'm just trying to like deduce why he is that way. And there's something to gain in, in this insight, I guess you'd say. Yeah. But I, I think he, he sees the world through a very pure lens. Oh, he and does. He doesn't really he doesn't really seem to place external judgments on too many things or people, which is Yep. That's, I guess I've kind of picked up on that and learned that from him, like from example, but that's a really just awesome way to live life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pure and unencumbered. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny. I had like a little epiphany the other day I was walking around and I was, uh, I don't know. I was kind of like in a shittier mood and I, I feel like I kind of understood this almost 
somewhat conceptually, but not with like an implied experience to my mm-hmm. life. So it wasn't therefore like meaningful and could be applied um, like to to live by a different philosophy carrying into the future. But mm-hmm. with that being said, I was going about my day and like I was pissed off about something. Like I was in a shitty mood yeah, for yeah. sure. By my own judgment, I was in a bad mood. And I remember going about my day and I I saw like some people on campus and I I saw them in a very negative judgmental way. And I was like, oh, they suck because of this. Right. Oh, they fuck them. Like it yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I, I want to avoid talking to them right now. And I bet you I don't remember who the individual was. I don't remember who it was exactly, but I bet you if you would ask me right now who which I consider myself to be in a decent state of mind right now, I would be like, oh, that person's really cool because of this. Because I I do remember who the individual was. It was like I've had a lot of positive experiences with them too, but I literally avoided seeing them out on campus just because of my own internal state. Mm -hmm. So therefore what I deduced and reasoned out of that experience, I was like, you know what? My internal state really affects how I feel about other people. That's a real reflection of how I feel about myself in that moment and how I feel about other people. Yeah. And it, it, it's I'm less crazy judgmental. that yeah, yeah, that whole concept of projection is, mm. is really crazy. Um humans are so some more than others, but humans generally are so prone to project their mood, their attitude, their, you know, perceptions onto the people around them. And and oftentimes their own you know, their own qualities. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really interesting to think about. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you could kind of apply that same logic and in, instead of like whenever somebody gets aggressive with you or bitchy with you or, or just mean, just, just mm. purely malevolent for no necessary reason whatsoever. Yep. It's like something, something's going on with them. Absolutely. So yeah. you're like, you just gotta, instead of getting aggressive back, it's like, Maybe take a step back and, and like, man, they might have had a bad day, man. Yeah, they realize they're – good chance they're not actually pissed at you. Yes, yes. Wow. That's that's really interesting to think about. Yeah. That's really interesting to think yeah. about. Yep. That's, that's something that I, you know, I find myself feeling like you were just describing pretty frequently. You know, some days you just wake up and you're you're pissed off. Doesn't matter, like – what you do, how much you slept the night before, like what kind of mood, like, you know, whatever else is going on in your life. Some days you're just in a bad mood. And, uh, when I think about that, you know, it's easy to start realizing that other people feel like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that mood is caused by something else going on in their, their world. So instead of, you know, when you're, uh, when someone gets mad at you, I I find it really easy to like blame myself or start feeling bad about myself or let that get to me in whatever way. But uh, you know, when you start realizing that, like, oh, they're projecting what's inside of them onto me, you know, that that can be a real game changer in terms of how you deal with other people and how you communicate with people who are in that state. Your response changes. Yes, absolutely. And it also changes my response to myself when I'm in that shitty mood. Mm -hmm. You know, it's way easier for me to pull back and be like, oh, wait a second. I'm I'm putting myself onto other people right now. So important. That's so important. That's that's a really cool thought. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been it's been a really uh important lesson subjectively speaking as well mm-hmm. honestly and it, that that experience is minute or minuscule as it could have been interpreted it was a great learning experience as well because i i kind of psychoanalyzed why am i this way mm-hmm. why why is it exactly that i uh, am that that is my response and i don't know i think there i've i've considered variables like um I grew up fighting a lot with my sister. Okay. And we were like cats and dogs, man, just going yeah, back. Yeah. So I was like, 
this is a learned response. That's all this is. Is mm. like because I've, I've cool. noticed that's like cool. I've always been a very nice, genuine person. At least I perceive myself to be that mm. way. And I think I think uh, a fair amount of people would back me on that statement. But with that being said, I've I've been that type majority of the time. Right. Majority of the time, but there were a few instances at particular moments in my life where I just get mean. Like yeah. I would just get mean. And I think it was a learned response. And I've been trying to consciously be more aware of that lately so that I can I can understand that it was a learned response to my behavioral conditioning of growing up in in a uh, con- conflicting environment. And yeah. I, I I'm not I'm not hating on my home life at all. I sure. I think it was great. It was just just the fact of uh, anticipating hatred yep. and then combating that with hate. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I think it's been a really great life lesson to have that self awareness and also uh, kind of switching gears a little bit on the statement I just previously made. But but Jordan Peterson talks about uh, whenever it so Jungian psychology referring to Carl Jung. Mm-hmm. He talks about this concept of channeling your inner shadow or okay. channeling your inner monster. And his reasoning behind that is become a monster, like become like a mean person and then channel that, like have that tamed, have that under control. Mm. And uh, his again, his reasoning to have that tamed and to have that under control is so that whenever you encounter pure evil or pure malevolence, um, you are able to stand up for yourself. And you're not just – you don't just roll over and become helpless and be, and be able to g- be vulnerable in the face of adversity or conflict just because you simply don't like conflict. Mm. It's human nature. Nobody likes conflict for the most part. Some people – There are some, some exceptions like it, yeah. always. Yeah. <laughs> if, for the most part, <laughs> most people would prefer to live their life without conflict. But the fact of life, the fact of human existence is that you are inevitably going to face some conflict and you're probably going to face people that are going to want to tear you down in life. Yeah, and you for gotta whatever be able reason. to consciously be understanding of that so that you can, ideally speaking, face that with a smile and be mm-hmm. like, and and just be able to handle your own and not mm-hmm. just not just roll over and become a helpless victim and become very helpless in the situation, because then you kind of eliminate your own vulnerability. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Um, I mean, I I have believed for a long time that uh, anger is like one of the very most powerful resources you can have and i think it's healthy you know it is it's natural to be angry at something about something you Mm -hmm. know whatever it may be whatever the source may be it's natural to be angry about that about something uh but it's important to know how to use it and i think that way unfortunately way too many people misuse it um, but it is a very, very powerful tool to have. It's a, a great thing to have um, in your in your back pocket, so to speak, um, because it, it can be one of the greatest, biggest, strongest, most badass motivators of anything. You know, um, nothing gets changed quicker than when someone's angry about something. Absolutely, that's a good point. Yeah, like a flip, a flip of the switch in the emotions. It really is. Yeah. So, and when you have that and you can channel it mm-hmm. and control it and, you know, turn it on and off and know when it's appropriate and when it's going to be beneficial to use it, mm-hmm. like, it's a game changer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to consciously also, like, have the idea of, like, be be somewhat conscious of, okay, I don't want to fight fire with fire too much right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. That's that's a good point. That's a good point. Cause yep. yeah, if you if you don't have that anger in your back pocket, you're just you're you're gonna roll over to somebody who does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then if you just you know flat out suppress that feeling, uh-huh. you're not gonna be able to use it responsibly. It's gonna come out at inappropriate, ineffective, flat out. Uh, you know, just very bad times. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For lack of a better way to put it. 
uh, it, it's it's going to negatively impact you, and it, it's going to drag you down with it in a sense. Absolutely, and I, I think I've gotten better personally, at kind of taming that that inner demon, that inner monster. Yeah, and by my own diagnosis, I would say there were problematic moments in my life as well that it it did prove to be pretty chaotic and definitely yeah. harmful to myself, my own reputation, and my own well being as well. Yeah. For sure. It's, uh, you know, like you said, it's, it's fire. Yeah. It's, if, if you mishandle it, just like a physical flame, if you mishandle it, it's going to cause some damage. But used effectively, it's a fantastic tool. It's incredibly diverse, incredibly powerful, incredibly motivating. So that's, that's, I like that analogy a lot. Yeah. Keep, keep the flame flickered. Keep it, <laughs> keep the candle lit, but, yeah. uh, keep it, it it's, under it's control. Like, Going from, this is a goofy analogy, but it's like uh-huh. going from, you know, a forest fire that's totally out of control to like a flamethrower that's all contained, it's on and off, it's directional. Mm-hmm. So, Wow, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, it's also uh, on the spectrum of just not, not just agreeing, just to agree. Yeah. Because if, I don't know, I just feel like a lot of people... That could definitely hold you back in life if you're just you're just going to agree just so that uh, oh I absolutely to, agree. to avoid the conflict. I, I think it's it's easy to kind of trick yourself into being a yes man uh-huh. or a yes person, um, just because it, it's the path of least resistance and it, it's you know very easy to it, a lot of people are prone to that. Uh-huh. I think. Um, just because easier is better so often. Um, but long term, I don't think like no one who is truly respected is a yes person, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think as I, I've especially noticed this as, as I get older and experience more, like as long as, you know, within reason, of course, but like having your own opinions and Uh your own thoughts is like, it's a it's something that earns respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's really important to think about. Yep. Yep. Um I mean, I know that like I I tend to be more likely to respect someone who has their own thoughts and ideas that are thought out and well perceived and well presented uh-huh. as opposed to someone who is just a chameleon and like goes along with whatever they're surrounded by. I like by. that. I like that cuz I've been using the even, word Yeah, yeah, even if I don't uh, like agree with that person's thoughts or opinions uh-huh. per se. So absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I have some great friends. I had a roommate, one of my favorite roommates I've ever lived with, and the dude and I, like me and him, disagree on everything, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. I, I, like on the, a personal level. Yeah, but yeah, not everything, but a, a lot, a lot. Right. And that's right. a good point. And if you if you want to be respected, you you got a chameleon, chameleon. You can't just acquiesce. To yeah. just everything everybody's going to say. Yep. That's it's really cool because I've been using the uh I think I I I hate to uh make this gender specific. I know there is a correlation, so this is uh factually speaking as well, between agreeableness and women. This is a Jordan Peterson topic. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes, it is. Yep. It's it's an observation in my own personal life backed by a Jordan Peterson statistic. Mm. Absolutely. But it, I've something I find really attractive in women is whenever they're willing to disagree with me, and then that I don't know my my I don't know I just I just find that um, I I've been using the word bimbos too much, but I like chameleon. I like chameleon a lot. Mm-hmm. With just just unwilling to challenge or refute or state your own opinions on something. Yeah. For whatever reason, that you're just going to become very submissive. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, because I think I think that it, as far as like if you're talking on like the the course of any relationship, like whether it be a significant other or like a good friend or whatever, if you can surround yourself with people that are going to challenge you and willing to disagree with what you're going to say, then uh, everyone involved is going to grow and benefit from that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep, diversity is healthy. Oh, yes. It's probably the coolest part of traveling. Everybody wants to travel, right? That's <laughs> yeah. probably the best part of traveling. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. We've been going for two hours. Wow, wow. 
I'm down to call this quits whenever, or we could, or we could keep going. It's up to yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I don't I don't want to overstay my welcome. Fair but, enough. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. Even though I'm in your place. Uh, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Yeah. But I'm I'm in your environment. Yeah. Good point. In the, good point. In the in the ether. Ooh. The the audio uh, universe. Absolutely. So. Do you care your, if I your territory, my environment. Ooh, well said. Well said. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll do it after. I was going to, I want to make like an Instagram video. Oh, okay. And, yeah, uh, definitely. But I'll just do it after, after the, so we can call this quits on the pod and then, okay. uh, and then do that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Any, any last words, anything like on your, uh, I'm going to make a few shameless plugs if that's cool. Okay. Um, I just recently worked on this super, super cool project, which Ooh. is a web series called to be me. Um, I was the uh, the boom operator uh, on set, and then uh, also did some mixing and some foley work and stuff like that, like uh, you know sound design type things. Mm -hmm. um, so that is uh, going to be coming out here in a few months. Web uh, series implying like a so think like a short film, like 30, mm -hmm. 40 minutes, broken up into like six to eight minute episodes. Very cool. Yeah. Oh wow, so that's awesome. This this show in particular is a uh, a coming out story for a non-binary transgender African American individual in the Midwest. Wow. So yeah. Wait, can you can you restate that plot again? Yeah. Okay. Coming out story uh -huh. for a non-binary transgendered African American individual in the Midwest. What do you mean by non-binary? So, like uh, the someone who neither like sort of uh just just doesn't adhere to the standard binary gender identification. They they don't necessarily perceive themselves as being strictly male or strictly female. Uh -huh. um, it's a little more fluid than that. Um, so, uh, but the this story in particular uh, is about uh, uh, an individual named Jordan who hey. is yeah <laughs> uh, transitioning from male to female um so even though she doesn't uh specifically identify as one or the other uh -huh. you know it, it it varies a little bit day to day um she identifies more as a woman um so Ooh. she is um currently both in the show and in real life uh in the process of transitioning from male to female so she gets to talk about her own experience with that mm -hmm. interesting yeah. so, interesting um this this is like basically a fictitious story uh -huh. that uh is, is based off real coming out stories okay uh, for a few fictitious of the, means fictional? well well just yeah fictional characters okay. you know it, it's not like a documentary or an interview series or anything like that. But with that. a pretty or somewhat it, it's real very topic. founded. Yeah, it's very founded in the uh, the real life stories of a couple of the characters in wow. the show. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So uh, it was a super cool opportunity. We had um, lots of people from the transgender community who were involved either as um, you know as stars or um, extras supporting characters um we also had several who were just like uh contributors uh -huh. um a lot of them would just like show up on set and help out however they could you know whether that was moving lights or like whatever else it was a lot of them were just there to help and interesting we're super excited to be a part of it yeah um so that's the the premise um it's going to be coming out uh, here in the next few months, hopefully, we are just about to start the post production process, um, for which myself and another audio guy from Springfield uh -huh. are doing all of the post production audio work. Oh, that's sick. Um, so I'm working with a guy named Colton Jackson, uh -huh. who was also on set working with me to capture the sound as it was happening. Um, but he's going to be sound designing, I am doing all of the mixing of the, the final audio. Okay, absolutely. Um, so we're just getting ready to start that process. It's hopefully going to be out in a few months. Um, so I think right now we're shooting for like March, April for the release of the first episode. Um, so that's going to be coming out on 2 be me web series.com. And, uh, Do you want to repeat be that just for 2 be me web series.com. Okay. So, very cool. Yeah. 
Um, going to be super cool. It was a ton of fun to work on. I worked with a bunch of local Springfield guys and our, our producers are, uh, they actually are both producers for the bachelor. Um, really? so this was, yeah, yeah, this was like their, their passion project, you know, their break from reality TV. Oh, um, wow. But okay. so yeah, super awesome project. Uh, everything is coming along super well and it looks beautiful and it sounds beautiful and we're all very excited for that to come out. So that's awesome. Um, man. There's also an Instagram page people can follow, which is at to be me web series. Um, so it'd be awesome if people could check that out. Um, and then also again, shameless plug, feel uh-huh. free to follow me. I'm also posting cool, uh, audio stuff, music I'm working on. Uh-huh. Um, so if you're interested in getting hooked up with some cool new local music, um, follow me. It is at Styron Sound. That's S T Y R O N Sound. So, and what what platforms is that on? That's Instagram as well. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. I don't think I follow you on Instagram. Not yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, actually, I I have told people this in the past, and I genuinely mean this when I say this. But I just either one, I forget, or. Two, I or the other person forgets to send it to me or whatever, vice mm-hmm. versa. But I need I need to remember this because I told I've told like one or two other people this. But I will put uh, your like link to everything at the top of the uh, description on this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so nice. on the on the video and on iTunes as well. Cool. Yeah, I will definitely send you all that info. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's huge because uh, I think I told the other person I could totally I know their social media. Sorry. Mental notes right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's like one of my favorite parts about this platform. It's like, yo, I can build other people up. Yeah. Like, it's, I'm not the only one out here chasing dreams. I'm not the only one out here enjoying what I enjoy. You know, yeah, like if I, could, if I could get the opportunity to build anybody up, even if it's, I don't know, even if you you make like one follower from this, like, yeah, so be it. Still, yeah, why it's not? something. It's something. Yeah. It's my contribution. It's what I can do. Yeah. You're you're uh, you're chasing your dream by talking about and helping other people build their dreams. True, which is true. Really cool. That's definitely an element of it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's it. That's really rewarding in itself too. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I, I really like uh, the the shameless plug or what am I saying the the um, be right to to be me to be me. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a really like interesting premise. Honestly, yeah, it sounds like a very niche market too. In a sense, yeah. Um, I, I I think it's, you know, sort of a growing issue or, or at least one that is having more light shed on it. Absolutely. Um, a pre-existing issue that is now being addressed in a more public forum, mm-hmm. um, which I, I think is super cool. And I'm, I'm really excited that I got to be a part of something with that kind of message. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's going to be really fantastic. Very so. cool. Do you... How are you guys marketing it, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, so I know that um, the producers have uh, been doing some interviews here and there. Um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know I've read at least a couple articles um, from different, uh, you know, TV associations and, like, blogs and stuff that they've interviewed with. Okay. Um, so other than that, the, um, you know, there's the GoFundMe uh all of that. There is the website that I mentioned earlier, and uh, and the Instagram. So that's really that's really where we're pushing right now. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Just uh, I, I I was asking out of curiosity for the uh, I guess the entertainment of uh, or marketing entertainment yeah. aspect. Yeah. Which is for sure. Interesting. Interesting. That'd be a great resume builder too. It would be. Plus, just a great experience in itself. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Really, like, it was super, super educational and rewarding um, in so many ways. You know, I, I learned so much about a topic that I was not super well educated about. Um, From people that live it. Yeah, yeah. Like, experience that it. That is as firsthand as you can get wow. without going through it yourself. Wow. So I, I feel very lucky to have been able to meet those people and become friends with those people and, uh, you know, learn the way I did and get to make something really great. And respect to you for, um, uh, embracing that, that diversity instead of just, uh, pushing it away. Cause yeah. 
got enough uh, rejection in this world. So <laughs> that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely do. That's yeah. that's awesome. Good yeah. for you. Thank Good you, for man. You. Thank you. Cool. Well, you got all of your uh, all your selfish, I, I, selfish, I think, shameless plugs. I, I think I've, I've <laughs> plugged myself enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, you want to say your ad name one more time, just so we get it at the end. My what? what? Your at name. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so my Instagram handle is at Styron Sound. That is S T Y R O N Sound. There you go. There so, you go. Yeah. Heard it here first. Um, this has been episode something. I don't know yet of one hundred one hundred something. Yes. Yes. There you go. Exactly. Uh, cool. Thank you for coming. And thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Ed. Yeah, bye. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. It's been yeah, great. Absolutely. Uh, reach, reach. <laughs> cool. All yeah. right. Call it quits. So long. Yeah. Wow, it's weird to transition. I know, <laughs>